All right, RBMX Unclick Podcast. Aaron Ross is in the studio today. What's up, dude? What's up, guys? You forgot Brett. You forgot Brett. Brett. We're going to bring him in a little bit. They're going to be like, who's this guy? But yeah, <laughs> Brett's, Brett's, Brett's sitting on the sideline. Are you yeah. nervous, Brett? No. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> a, little, a little bit. <laughs> um, no, I'm excited to be here. I've been. I've listened to a, a, the majority of the ones y'all have done. I've really enjoyed it. I think it's, it's great to have like you guys doing it consistent with the more important people, you know, like, and I mean that in the nicest way, like there's rad stuff going on where you guys are killing it. And like, there's a lot of podcasts, but like sometimes it's people you don't know or you don't know much about. And so this has been really rad to be able to see and hear things through people that I do like or already know. Thanks dude. Yeah. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. It's uh, it's been, it's been interesting that people have, you know, like Sean coming in town for that in particular is, was super cool. Like totally. I mean, and you guys are both from Texas. Well, I don't know if you're, you're not from Texas, but you both live in Texas right now and you're all the way out here to do a podcast with us it's amazing yeah so well, thanks boys they're in la and they came down they're but we'll, living we'll, in we'll austin still though it. we'll still take <laughs> it. it's true we were supposed to be here two weeks ago but we uh, got a little hold up in the snow so. oh yeah yeah pretty wild okay let, yeah stuff. let's talk about let's talk about that because obviously dugan was here and did the podcast and he was missing it and you had you guys both had to experience it was it was it actually lights out horrible experience or it, it was pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty wild. Like he, you know, he's from the, the East coast North up there and like, he's used to it, but the city's used to it. Austin is not, it'd be like if you guys were stuck in five or 10 degree weather for five days straight on snow. Yeah. And like, you know, I remember Gary's old house. He's like, we don't have a heater or we don't have AC. And I'm like, Oh, you would be like, it's it, <laughs> so Austin was like, that. I mean, everyone's pipes are breaking when everything was thawing out. Like I have, I have a couple of rental properties and they're messed up. And like, we had to deal with all of it. So when he was like, do you want to, you know, push the trip? And I was like, I kind of have to. Like, yeah. our, the city is just messed up. There's people that went, like, to, You couldn't like, even fly out. Really. No, they yeah. can't. Yeah. It, that was, a, I don't want to say nice, but it was nice the airline canceled everything, so you didn't have to have that conversation. Be like, we're not coming. No. He was like, it was you're just not impossible. Com- yeah, like, you're not coming. So it was wild, man. Like, I had a lot of fun in it until, like, day three, and you started to realize, like, how big of a deal this is did it start to feel like a well like we didn't lose power oh yeah we we didn't lose power so for us it didn't get to that point but like you're hearing from friends and family like they're oh we've been out for two days and then some people went on for like a week what do you do with no power when it's freezing cold people were like pipes were breaking and so houses literally had ice hanging from the ceiling fan because the pipe from the house above or the apartment above like there's they couldn't handle the cold in the pipes no like no every pipe dude there's apartment complex that still to this day may not have water right now because every single pipe in the entire building broke and they can't they're going through the building fix them and they're just falling on top of each room wow. in the, it was it was a real nat- natural design it's the first one i've ever been involved in besides i grew up in hurricanes but like sometimes they didn't really affect you or whatever and like and this like you said wild. the cities can be built for that they know it's coming totally like, they don't think a winter the no. winter storm comes like every hundred years totally. or something and people would be like oh don't y'all have sand or, or not sand salt i don't even know what it is because i don't live yeah. there. and they were like no like we don't like we do and they, so the like, freeways were done too oh yeah like you wow. couldn't leave you couldn't leave your house you couldn't do anything and they like day three they started laying salt down on like the like the overpasses but they couldn't do anything about it well, so you, what were you these guys people had, you guys had the thing like a couple years ago where like austin flooded too though oh, really? like yeah. there was like house park was like underwater yeah, and, that, and, and that, stuff that, like uh, austin landing cattle food truck was like at the park yeah. was underwater yeah. yeah austin's crazy i forgot <laughs> yeah. about that yeah, yeah. Um, old texas we'll, we'll get into burrow later but your your sandwich shop yep uh i noticed that you guys did something where you guys were giving out free food and all that stuff was that that was just a byproduct of like trying to help people out or totally i mean we we have a during, good during the yeah yeah we have a good network of food and food friends and like austin's you know i think just like here or anywhere like everyone tries to help everyone out and so my sister-in-law runs a pretty big PR company. And so she kind of organizes all these friends of hers and like well-known influencers in town. And they, they raised over $150,000. They were like talked about on like, don't quote me on the exact thing, but like yeah. the, I think Jimmy Kimmel called them and like, they wow. did like donate some money and like all kinds of stuff. And so basically we were part of that giving money to, or like they would help pay for meals and people could come pick them up. That's and cool. um, the problem was that restaurants had no power. And so refrigerators and all the freezers would break so product was bad and so finding people that had product that didn't go bad was one of the hardest things so like we had i think we gave away like i don't know a thousand sandwiches or something well that's all we had yeah we have no more product and can't no one can bring it to you so it was hard to find people that had product and had stuff but anyways it was good to help and we actually let some people use some like we helped give equipment to help other people with the product they did have so it was 
we all kind of just got together and tried our hardest. And, cool. I mean, those girls raised one hundred fifty thousand dollars or over one hundred fifty thousand dollars. It was like that's incredible, pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. so it was good. That's, that's amazing. Cool. That was like straight up insane. Oh yeah. What were what are the people doing that don't have heat and their water's coming through their roof? Like what was what is up with those? Well, a couple a couple of people died. Yeah, there there was, was, I there would, was that's like what it seems like. Totally. What the hell would you do? You're, well, and there, you're there stuck. Was, there's there was no people nowhere that to go. Died of uh, carbon monoxide poisoning because totally. they were in their car. And Houses they didn't realize. Oh, like people that. probably were going in their car. Do you remember that out. kid? You maybe don't, but Hunter Bajent, He was like he did like a the TV show. The Woodward. Yeah, the Woodward show. He's a firefighter now, and like day. It was like Dugan mentioned him. Yeah, yeah. He was like three days in, hadn't had any sleep, and he's like, dude, I we were we're answering like a hundred phone calls a day or calls a day going to them. And like people are lighting their, they're making fires in their living room. So houses are burning down. It was, I mean, it was not really, oh and gosh. it was, and you could see like the ring app or the neighborhood app or whatever. And like, people are just like, does anyone have any baby food? Like I can't get to the store. The store is closed. Like my child t- can't, I yeah. can't produce milk. And like, I have a six month old baby. And it was like, it's just not, and you're just like, you can't read this. Like, cause you can't do anything about it. Yeah. And it's just sad. So it was, <laughs> It was the realest thing that I'd ever been a part of. Wow. We were very lucky to not lose power. We did lose water the last few days. He he stay, His girlfriend lives like a block from me, and they were on the same page. I don't think y'all lost power. Or you lost power the last few days. We did for a couple of days, yeah. yeah, yeah. What was, was that crazy. like? What did you guys do? We just were like, all right, we're not opening the fridge, and we're just not going to open the doors and hang out under blankets, light candles, yeah. and just, just did like crafts and stuff. Supreme. <laughs> supreme. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my god! It was, it was gnarly for sure. Yeah, Crazy. I guess if your pipes don't leak, you can just you can just hang out in blankets and stay cozy, yeah. as cozy as you can be. Yeah. But fuck, your pipes start leaking and you don't Dude, have anything. I mean, it's the cr- like ours, done. ours popped outside, and so it's like easy fix on the side of the house. But like people's were popping above their like living room, yeah, and there's like there would be like an icicle this high from like this long from the fan. I mean, geez. it was cr- it was just crazy to see. So it wasn't but, like oh, I can't go on a riding trip. It's like. This is so much more than that. Real. Yeah, it was more of like as soon as it clears up, we have to help family and friends or ourselves with our properties, like put stuff back together. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Seeing it in like news and on social yeah. media, just like, oh, that's fun. It's snowing in Austin. Yeah, I'm doing donuts in the bug. I mean, I went the first two days and we're just like, we have that old 9-11, the, the rally 9-11, we have the bug and we're just out there doing donuts and Bauer, I remember Bauer was so bummed. He could, his house ran out of power or had no power, so he couldn't open the garage, so he couldn't get the car out. And he was like, uh. I can't. So the first two days, that was like the part where we probably should have been taking it a little more serious. But what do I know? I mean, I'm yeah, from, you I'm from South. Gonna, you don't think it's no. going to last either. And I also, yeah. I'm from yeah. South Texas. Like, we don't grow up playing in the snow. I've been places. I've driven rental cars in the snow. I've had fun in the snow. But you don't get to drive your car in the snow and, like, enjoy it down the street. So it, we had a good time, but it got real pretty quick. Yeah. And um, but everything seems to be better now. I mean, people went for a while without water and like stuff like that. People were like taking water out of the pool to like fill up their toilets. It was it was Nuts. wild. Yeah. And it looks Great. like it's all melted. And people are riding the skate park. Again. Dude, I think Saturday it was eighty degrees, and we were like, right, we we rode we mm-hmm. rode Texas a school together. Crazy. Was that like Saturday that. or Sunday? So Friday was like the last day, and we were we had like a session with ten dudes like rail hopping. I like posted, and I was yeah. like. We it was like, like hot. The snow melt pretty much. We're like doing rail <laughs> hops, and there's like snow next to us, and it was like 80 degrees. It was like crazy, Amazing. insane. It's so. Back to normal. <laughs> yeah, literally. Just here we are. Yeah. So, what is this trip that you're out in California for? We did the um, the USL, USL blow up the yeah. streets. Yeah, okay. that was the main reason why we were out here. And then besides, what was that all about? The blow up the streets. Yeah. Um, we did. It was like yeah. the 24 hour like get footage in 24 hours just right it, it was you it was three people and right? alec yeah and alec. i yeah. think i think a bunch of teams are just doing like small groups i think is it i don't think anyone's doing more than like three people per, yeah. per team okay. and there's been like the hours. blow up the skate park the game of bike yeah i've seen all this. those yeah. so this hasn't come out yet no, no, no okay no, no. so yeah so um, it's a team with sponsors so it would be for Sunday. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is you, a Sunday one. And you two and Alec, and Alec, then you guys yep. film for 24 hours? Yep. And did yeah, you guys go the full, like, 24 hours? Oh, but we no. did go. I guess we did go a long time. I thought, like, they – I thought, like – It's probably harder on Grant. I mean, Grant's filming it, right? I mean, after yeah. a certain yeah. point, yeah, yeah. what's the – Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, done. we, we yeah. went – we went. We got there like eleven. We kind of slow start, then got moving, and then we did like we went all the way to like ten o'clock. I think ten o one. There was the ender, and I was like, "Hell of the phone." I was like, "We're done." And like we, that was like we went to the last spot thinking we were done, and we're like, "Oh, we got some stuff." And like, yeah. but it was a good time. But you could. Brett, have, but honestly, you could have woke up at eight. No, I mean, let's really be real here. We probably, I'm we okay probably we almost woke. did twelve hours. I mean, yeah, which is pretty. Brett, good. It's gonna be. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying. To get clips I'm just time. saying. If you want to quit like that, I mean, yeah, we we did. I mean, you could we <laughs> joked about we joked about waking up early and then going at it the next morning yeah. and making Grant come out and, and be then like, Grant, Grant was yeah. like. But we weren't that eager. I guess like, we got a good amount of clips, but I've heard some stories of some other teams that like you know 
went went in for yeah. like six or seven minutes of clips or something. I was like, dang, yeah. we didn't do that. That's but sick. Brett Brett carried us. We're definitely extras in Brett's video. <laughs> sick. He went in. Um, I got beat up the day before filming some stuff, and I think that was a little bit tough. You're like trying to juggle. Like I want to do real. I don't want to say real stuff, but real stuff, and then try and go do this. And so I showed up pretty banged up. My foot was pretty banged up. So mm -hmm. like every time you'd sit down and watch him ride, you'd get like, you'd start to hurt. So you just, it was really hard to get in it all day. Yeah, yeah. And then Alec was like, oh, I've never filmed more than four clips in a day in my life. And so he was like, I have to go home. Like, he was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> he made his quota yeah, and he's he like, like, I don't know what to do. Exactly. Yeah. So no, it was, cool. we had a good time. So that was, that was right. That was during this trip. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was on wow. Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ironic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Damn, can't wait to see that. USL's yeah, so you guys, I think they just dropped the uh, behind, behind the scenes, scenes today. Yeah, so I don't know a chance to watch it I'm, but. we're all pretty good friends like brett and i ride and hang out on a regular basis in austin and then alex like everyone he gets along with everyone so we had fun all day yeah. like that was it like the clips were second to like us just having fun hanging out so we had a good time were you guys the last team to go or i think another, because you know, of the storm yeah we were the last team to go at this but okay they're i guess releasing our video first which we were surprised on this like think, last night they were like i think and, a few more teams are gonna do it oh okay uh, maybe yeah, i think okay. BS, i don't think bsd's done it yet Oh, okay. And they're on the list. So they're oh. flying everybody out, to, or everyone's coming to L.A., and then Grant's yeah. filming them? Yeah. You pick, like, a spot. It, you, we could have picked anywhere. We could have picked Vegas, but, mm. like, you can pick You pick a spot. Oh, you pick a city. That's from my understanding. Did someone say that? A lot of teams picked. Uh, we got Zach the over there, yeah. Odyssey yeah. team manager. Yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> Wait, what was that, Zach? Sorry, I couldn't hear. So a lot of teams would pick. It's kind of like one zone, so we picked downtown L.A. Yeah, yeah. more or less, but other teams did UCR or UCLA. Uh, yeah. Are you allowed to get in a car? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. I think we try to do that because you could pedal. And so we pedaled until dark and then we got Stay the, out car of the car as much with as possible. the lights. Mm. And then we I mean, honestly, UCR the is the best choice you could have made. The place is literally I, we went insane. There, we went there last night. I've never been there. Yeah. That was unbelievable. It's fucking insane. It, I, like, they didn't even attempt to skate stop or stop no. anything. Every yeah. time I go there, I'm like, nothing skate stopped. Yeah. There's, there's a few things that are, but it's like, they, who cares? I, I like, I my mind was like, I just don't understand. Like, why did someone let them get away? And that some of it's brand new buildings. Mm -hmm. I'm like, y'all didn't even try. I know, right? We don't know. We're not, yeah, we're not, yeah, saying, we're yeah, not saying we are saying We said UCR, so you could figure, you could. UCSD. You, yeah, 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 yeah. UC. Uh, yeah, you're right. I don't want to give anything. I'm going to get a ticket yeah. at UCSD. We, I was in <laughs> UC all. Rancho. I've never seen anything like that. I've seen, you know, I've seen some great campuses and they're like, that was like Barcelona smashed into a college campus. Yeah, it was crazy. unbelievable. Yeah, so, it is nuts. That's cool. That's awesome. And then uh, you are here for how many? So what do you? What's the real stuff? Um, we're just check, uh, you know filming some clips, some Odyssey or for me Odyssey and Sunday stuff. Just okay. kind of like stacking clips for. Um, un, we don't know exactly yet, but we're just kind of working on stuff. Do some bike checks. Did some stuff with Z this morning. Yeah. And um, just kind of like trying to get some checking stuff the done. boxes. Yeah, like after a year of hiding out in Austin and kind of doing whatever, yeah. it's kind of nice. Because so. yeah, you had a kid, right? I had a child. You had That's a child. Cool. I had a child. Awesome. You're, you're having a child. Yeah. Congratulations. A couple dads in the yeah, room. A few dads. <laughs> That's sick. So so what do you do Zach's when you're not Zach's out? Zach's next. Is he? Zach's next. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I, I love the face. I love it just saying that and then watch him go like, uh, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, put the pressure on him. Um, so. Yeah, so you've been pro BMX rider for so long, but what do you do when you're hiding out in Austin, Texas? You got some other things going on. You said rental properties. Yep, some people I, know you're involved with the food truck. Yep, we, uh, we, I do, we do all kinds of stuff. I don't know exactly how to explain it. I used to always be like, what do I do? I ride bikes. And I'm like, now I'm just like, yeah. whatever. I just do everything and that's... Yeah. I, I don't want to say like I'm hustling, but you know what I mean. Like you're just kind of all over the place. Um, we have a couple of rental every, properties. Every day I'm hustling. Who, who is we? Hustling. You My and your wife. Family? Oh, you and your wife. Okay, yeah, yeah. cool. Um, and we uh, so then we have the food truck. We're look, we're talking about doing another like a coffee truck possibly. And so your food stuff. truck is the grilled cheese, the burro. Yeah, burro cheese. So that's you have. and your wife's. Yep. Uh, well, me and a partner, but yes, wife of course. Sweet. And um, and then Brett's been hanging out there for a few years. Yeah. He's moving on to bigger and better things. Wait, right so now. Aaron was your boss for a little while. No. Yeah, but it's mostly Justin. <laughs> yeah. Were you working there or just eating there? I was working there. Nice. Yeah. Definitely yeah. eating there, Sick. though. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. Um, and then, like, it's been rad because, like, helping dudes on Sunday, or not just Sunday, any of the BMXers, but we have a bunch of dudes in town that work. Like, Ben Allen works there. Jared Swafford worked there. Or That's still, rad. It's, so it's so like So you understand what they're doing. You yeah, can help out with Yeah, and we also want to help them go ride bikes and, like, yes. do that. And so that's rad. And, like, Erica, who runs it, like, she's been around the BMX scene with Jared for all this, for years, for forever. And so she understands, like, he wants to go ride. Yeah. And, like, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, as much as it could hurt that someone's like, I'm not coming in today, 
she understands and like she like that stresses her out which sucks but like she lets them do their thing yeah. so because it's so much, amazing for a writer yeah. and like up. it helps like Julian and jared when they moved to austin we put them up real quick and then they found where they wanted to go work and do their thing so mm-hmm. like they both kind of come back and in and out to work there if they need something but like it's more of like a i don't want to say we're a stepping stone but like it helped them get to austin yeah i mean that's what i was gonna say is when you have a job that like like you have the you have the pro career and it you know you may even make enough to like live off of but sometimes you just like idle hands type stuff like having a little bit of structure of like five hours a day or something a few days a week or something like that and you know you can break off to like go on a trip without having that repercussion that extra money like lets you enjoy life a little bit more than totally you know, worrying yeah. about cash. You know? Brett, so. Brett and I talked about this a lot on this trip, actually, and he feels that same way. Like, he was like, I don't think I would want to, even if I made enough money, I don't know if I want to not have a job. Yeah. It's just yeah. he likes that, like, time away, which yeah. is cool. So, yeah, yeah, it's nice. You don't get burnt out on anything, you know? Yeah. It's like you don't know what to do with yourself yeah. sometimes. I've so had, you, like, too much time. Unless you're a socialite like Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If so. I have too much time to ride, I, like, almost don't ride as much. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Right? So yeah, you get like caught up in like doing nothing. So. You get, you can just, you get burnt out. Cause totally. it's just, it turns into like what only thing you're doing, you know, yep. you need something else. Yeah. So, so yeah, we do all kinds of stuff. We do that. We do, we have the, the rental houses and then we, we do some like flips and stuff. We're working on another one. Well, we're working on getting into another one right now. We just committed to buy it and we'll like deal with that in a few months. And we kind of so you have rental get... houses and you bought those and flipped them or you do like the we rental flip houses them to be rented. So we'll wow. live in them for a year or two, do some work on them and then try and get out of them Damn. and just like rent them out. Um, my wife does a bunch of like, uh, development work and stuff like that, like, uh, like land development stuff. So I've been helping them do a lot of that stuff, which is like, I do a lot more of the running around and connecting dots and helping like find, find money, find things and find, find land and that kind of thing. It's really fun because it kind of lets me fit it into my schedule, which Mm -hmm. is like, I want to ride bikes in the morning. I'd like to, and then hang out with the baby. And then like, so I sort of watch the baby a lot while she goes and does like the harder computer work and like the real stuff and i kind of like help her connect dots and like deliver stuff and i can do that with a baby without the baby That's and cool. on the way to write a spot like i'm like we're going north today like i can go drop these papers off get them done and then like go write the spot or whatever so i'm always the guy leaving the thing i have to go drop something off before five you yeah. know I'm like, you sound like you got you put a lot of things in Juggling. your day but it sounds easy for you like yeah natural. it's always like it just has to be done be- before five most of the time and like you know sometimes you're just getting papers signed and you're like taking them back and like it's a bunch of that kind of stuff and like um, I play some golf, which I like. I enjoy. It's like peaceful. I kind of like, I'm not a big like hiker or like want to walk in a park guy. So like, that's always been something fun that I can like go out for a walk. But it's like, I'm, I grew yeah, up. Yeah, you're all, in a really nice park when you're golfing. Totally. Right? And I grew up playing all these sports. So this is way to like get out and walk. And like, I don't want to say like I'm walking for exercise, but it's like peaceful. Yeah. I enjoy yeah. that. So even if that's like meditative that, almost, exactly. like you're just, you playing your sport, but it's yep. like nice and slow. Yeah. And I just never liked hiking or anything like that. I'm always get up to the top. I'm like, okay, I'm exhausted. <laughs> this is like, I can just do this and it's fun. So I enjoy that. So yeah. Always seemed cool. Yeah. Smacking the golf ball and yeah. just following it around whether a nice park. <laughs> whether you're good or, bad at, good or bad at it, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. So yeah, we do a bunch of, I do a bunch of car stuff. With yeah, Bauer, car stuff yeah. too. Yeah, you've yeah. seen. We got, I do all kinds. We do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yes, that's cool. You so, don't smoke or drink or anything, no, do you? You seem no. very like straight yeah. and so I've never, sharp. I've I've drank a little, but not often. I have a memory of that. Oh, that's. Yeah. I don't know if I yeah. want to know yeah. about this one. Uh, yeah. But I've never smoked. <laughs> I've never smoked. Yeah. So I've never. Sharp never. shooter. This guy's. This guy's like coming up on ten. ten like ten days from now is three hundred or a year sober oh, wow. from drinking. So he's killing it. That's awesome. That's good. Was it just getting in? Getting annoying. Being hungover all the time, or yeah, just feeling like shit. Kinda. Seems like the the reoccurring scenario with BMXers. Yeah. Like yeah. you just yeah. get over yeah. it. Yeah. Myself included. I feel like if I have like two, like you know, like I have that that whiskey bottle in there, and I'm like, if I have two glasses of whiskey, I'm like, not. I'm just like fucking useless the next yeah. day. Yeah. I just don't want to do anything. I don't feel bad, but I just like my motivation is so low. You know, and it's just like, all right, I can't, I can't, I don't have the ability to not do something yeah. anymore, unfortunately. So yeah, I've always, I've actually always enjoyed drinking. I think it's fun. I've only drank a handful of times and I've always had a good time. I think it's more of, I don't really like the taste of beer and I don't like the taste of wine. So the two chillest things that you would eat dinner with or like have a, have a burger with, I don't like. And yeah. so therefore you like, there's not like a chill. Th- I'm not going yeah. to be like, give me a Red Bull vodka. So the like, times you've drank have been like they're always like margaritas partying. or they're like shots. Yeah, and it's like I'm all in real quick. He had a, it was, that's, a, that's, it was, it was yeah, like a fun. handle. It was like a handle of Jack Daniels oh, in the hotel at X Games, basically. Oh yeah, and he you was were there that night. Yeah, I was there that night. <laughs> Doesn't drink very much and has a handle of Jack <laughs> no. in front of a I bunch of people. Wanna, I almost want to say the quote, but I won't. No, yeah, no. I do <laughs> remember just, that quote. See how ready he is. Don't already. He doesn't want to say. But I've always enjoyed it, and now it's something where like once a year we'll be on a road trip and 
Like in January, we went down speaking, to... Speaking of things that we're not allowed to talk about, uh, uh, <laughs> do you want to read this third question and see if that's a... See, is that on subject? Can is we, there a third question? Yeah, the third Oh, yeah, sentence. we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners are like, what are you guys doing to us? Third one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. That's though. a great <laughs> question. <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> Aaron Ross, the boss. <laughs> um, yeah, so... <laughs> anyway... So in just the memories are uh, floating yeah, back. Like, okay. there. Damn, that's sick though. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that one either. Huh? It's legendary. Uh, we should have. So I should have just not asked. I should have just not asked that question. Yeah. I should have just asked. That Everybody's question. gonna want to know. Everyone's gonna I ask know. me about it. Hey, Some, that question? First person to Venmo me ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Get this we'll get this question. All right, deal. I'll, yeah. I'll Venmo you. Speaking so no one of else that question, <laughs> kind of on topic, but off topic of that question. So you're like super tied into Texas. Yep. Sounds like you're from Corpus Christi, yep. Austin. So your whole family's there and everything. Yeah, which we talked about this a lot on this trip too, because we were talking about guys that are come out here and ride. And like, I probably would end up in California also if Austin's scene wasn't so good at that mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Um, and I grew up three hours away and I'd like come up here on the weekends, come up here all the time or come up to Austin all the time. And we, the first five years it was Austin was blowing up and now it kind of, and then, then it sort of dipped and like people were coming out here, things were changing and now Austin's on fire right now. I mean, mm-hmm. the last few years, all these dudes are here. This like, there's team, there's like groups of teams. It's, it's rad right now. So I think I would have ended up out here if I didn't have that. You guys got so such close. a good scene. Man. Yeah. And my parents are like three hours away. My sister lives in Austin. I have a lot of family in town. So it's like, and now Bethany's whole family's, she's from there, born and raised. So like we, we're not, yeah, going, not going anywhere. anywhere. Oh, that's great. So you think, you think you would have, cause I always kind of felt like maybe Austin was such an easy jump for you because it was a hub that you, but you consciously knew that you wanted to be a pro rider and you would have gone to California if you had to. Totally. I think okay. you, I think if you were in Colorado or something like yeah. it's either you come to Austin or you go. And for me, it was so close. And I, and by that time, so quickly, I was traveling so much that I was on the road all year anyway, so it really didn't matter where I was. I looked at moving to Nashville for a moment. Mm. Nashville was pretty popping off. Yeah, for a it was when Corey and Nathan were living there, and like we were already Shane. all close. Yeah, Seth, yeah. Seth, right? Seth was there. And so I was going to move for three months. I wasn't going to sell my house. I was just going to like, I had renters. I had guys living in it with me. And I was like, I'm going to go to Nashville. I'm going to rent an apartment for three months and just like take nothing and like buy a bed when I'm there and just like enjoy it. But then I was like, didn't pull the trigger, didn't pull the trigger, and then basically traveled for three months that summer. And I was like, I'm so happy I didn't move to Nashville. I would never have been there. Like, you know, so yeah. I think once you're in the groove of traveling, it's like hard to, you know, it's hard to think that you would be somewhere else. I think things are different in BMX today because like social media has changed so much stuff and like you don't have to travel so much. Yeah. I think you, you know, you guys plan trips and go places and chase stuff down, which is that's all we did. Um, but not everyone has that same I don't know, it was opportunity as we once did or like as BMX once did back then yeah. to some extent. Yeah. Like, yeah. so stuff can get done at home. You can get information or get videos out so much easier in a different way. And like, um, so. Yeah. So how, how did you kind of like start those trips? Because, it, you know, you, I feel like you were pretty young when you started like going on like road fools and stuff like that. And like so what? Chill bro. Like, yeah. Yeah. But you were still in Corpus Christi at that time, right? And just like going. Wait, to what's first? What's first? What's in? What's the Empire? It's it it's goes, just Empire video. Was Empire the, video. But just there was no yeah. name. The, the, the like fiddle, the fiddle, fiddle in the band. band. Yeah. And that's then, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Was and your peg chill- loose in that, or was your chain? What was no, loose? My hub guard was loose. Your hub guard is it was like so kept, loud. It kept the whole getting, part. It kept getting worn down, so I just like took a grinder, and just grinded it out. I was like, it'll just sit there. I always thought you ran your front peg super loose. I was like, this guy's insane. It's funny because those weird little things like that are the things that to today people are still like, what was wrong with your bike? It like, sounds I like your front peg. I feel like this was like a good thing that it was like I did this on accident. Like that part too changed the game in street riding at the time. Let's yeah. just say it. Yeah. That was yeah. like a game changer. You know, it was like after Van Home and in between Garrett and then Aaron Ross was like right here. You yeah. like you definitely I had, had I, a middle. I had my one change. year. I, or, you know, I You've had, had a bunch years, of years, but, but that was like that part was like holy shit. Yeah, for a, a long time. Kind of you know, I won Nora Cup. Not after that one, but after Chilbro and Grounded, I won a, a street rider, and I was always like, oh man, I won it once, and like. Corey won it five times. Van won it five times. I was like, man, I won it once, like, which is fine. Yeah. But then Garrett's won it, you know, for so long. I was like, oh, I feel pretty good. Like that's yeah. You know, yeah and yeah, and yeah, everyone yeah. that's won it after has been obviously like. So I was very. It, just it makes Nathan it almost Dak. more. Yeah. And I almost I mean, feel oh, more Jordan, grateful Jordan, uh, to be in that. Like, and, Dak, and Nathan Dak and uh, sorry, Jordan. What's it, what's the dude from Canada? He's a badass core. Oh, uh, Hango. Hango. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah so sorry. I've sorry. To... I've no, like right. been, you know, then it, at, when you look back at who it is, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm. No, that's a good group. Yeah, yeah. Of like I'm, to be involved and I was with. never yeah. bummed. It yeah. was more of like, oh, it'd been cool to do it twice. So did you win it? Did you win a video part one too or no? No, we actually okay, talked so... about this morning with Z. 
was, and I don't know. I think you had told me this once. I yeah. think, um, and I, you can. Uh, I mean, if I said it, it's probably true. Well, I, I don't remember the details. Bullshit. But I told him in the video, like I had grounded in the and Chilbro came out the same year. Oh and yeah. And my votes were split. split. Yeah. And I think Ruben won the video part, which obviously he deserved it. Yeah. But but you, were you think, not, were you both parts nominated? Um, no, I think yeah. neither was. So no one's done that. Oh yeah. wow. Like, but neither he was. said, but he was like, you had the equal amount of votes split between the two and it actually uh, screwed you. Fucked you fucked yourself yeah. over. Yeah. Two good parts. And I'm I, sure that was... I'm and sure I think you always true, were like, yeah. we should have just put them as one because that was like, we, you were all getting voted for. But anyway, well, you won Street Rider the year. I did. So one basically that's yeah, kind it of was all that Yeah, for. because if you didn't put out those two video parts, you may not have won Street Rider because it's people true. are like, fucking yeah. Aaron And I don't know if any year, part you know, ever so. besides maybe like Van's Criminal Mischief would have beat Ruben's Grounded part anyway. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not bummed, but it was like one of those things I remember. Sometimes it was just those years where it's like something comes out and you're like well i'm gonna push my video part yep. <laughs> you know it was a weird year to think because i think like matias won his first one that year mm-hmm. um was it palms uh, i don't remember mm-hmm. he won no i think he no, won it's like, it, it, no sorry oh, palms oh, and no Vegas. i think it was hard rock, oh, hard rock. pretty okay. sure right. and then um kyle bennett the bmx racer won it and he was from texas and we grew up racing i raced on the same team when i was younger right. and like it was, it was like a moment where you're like, you know, he's passed away at this point. And so, like, he was, so sick. Oh, fuck. he was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. And that was my favorite BMX racer since I was a kid and I was on the team. And, like, I have, like, that night. And now it, whatever, I, like, went in the back. And we knew each other, but I didn't know he remembered me. And I was like, hey, I just wanted to know this, like, not in, like, a, you're obviously, like, going to the Olympics. This is irrelevant. But, like, I beat you once. I told him. I was like, <laughs> I beat you at, in Houston at a, at a race. Yeah. And he was like. That he was so psyched because he obviously yeah. there's no, like that shouldn't be a dig. That's like, yeah. dude, I like, it meant the world to me. Yeah, yeah. That's and obviously, like my racing achievement. Is yeah, like, and obviously, yeah. he could have beat me that day. Like, it's he maybe didn't even try. But yeah. the moment for me was real, and I was like, like a practice like, lap. And you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. totally a practice. Oh, lap. was it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And he I probably stood to the first burn. I did. I went as hard as to the first turn. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if he tried. He was behind me. And then, but I, but the part, I, but the part I remember is I beat him. And then we get to the next gate, and he gets in with me. And then I snapped into the first turn. Oh. And so I don't know if he tried it hard the second time, but I remember whether or not he did or didn't. I was fast that day, yeah. and I was like, and that's couldn't have been a better moment for me. Like that's my favorite racer, and like a dude from Houston, Texas. No, that's and, cool. like, I get that. yeah. and then to win the Nor Cup the same year is like it was pretty real, and like it felt like Texas was. I think Morgan maybe won that year too. Probably. Yeah. And so it was like Texas was like on the stage that year, and it was really rad, and just like felt like you know we were. Texas was on the map, yeah, so. yeah. cool. and yeah. obviously Texas had been on the map before, but it had been a while since, like you know, maybe Ford or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it was just it was cool. So we uh, we went on tangent there, but what? So when you we brought up that video part and it just went that way, but like so when was how uh, how how old were you kind of like, or how did it start kicking off? Like how did you go from Corpus to you know to going on to Metro Jams and Road Fools? We, so we were, I met, I go back to you. yeah, I, my parents were really rad. My parents like helped and they, I think they were just kind of like, we'll help you for a year. Well, first of all, I was riding in high school and I'd drive to Austin on the weekends. Mm-hmm. It was like a three hour drive. I'd drive to Austin and stay with Devin or whoever. I had some friends from high school that like didn't ride, but I could sleep on their couch. They were going to school and I would just go up there and ride and meet up with Joel Moody and like Jed Rogers. And he would like shoot photos and like, we were just out filming. And I didn't know any different. I've never, I just was doing what I did. I just would like ride stairs and ride stuff and spin and do all this stuff. And they like, he, Joel, later Joel's like, I was just telling Tina, like this guy, we've got to put him. So they're just filming me and I don't know that I'm going to be in the video. And halfway through, I probably did, but like we just kind of just grew into this thing. So the video comes out and towards the end of, that's my senior year. We're working on it on the weekend. This is Empire. Empire, Empire the first Empire video. Yeah. Okay. And then, so we graduate in May or whatever. And, I leave high school 10 days early to go on Road Fools, and that was sort of like, I just left, and I was like... Wait, so it was like Road Fools your first little, like, like did they bring you on as, like, yeah, that was like weirdo kid? From that was like my first trip. Like, I think I went to a, a Roots Jam when I was 17 with, like, a bike shop in Houston, okay. like, before Empire. Yeah. I might have been 16, and I, like, crashed. I did, so like, who, uh, like how, how do you... Who put you on Road Fools? Joel he, Moody. Joel, Joel, yeah, yeah. Like Joel was, Joel Joel was working Marco. with, well, he oh, was working, working with, with yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. This is before right. FBM and all the crazy colored bikes. Yeah, yeah, I, had, yeah. I don't, yeah. on F, on Road Fools, I was Just on tiny FBM. shirts and throwing bikes. Yeah, basically. totally, yeah. small shirts. Yeah. <laughs> on May, or on a Road Fools, I was on an FBM. I think I was on a blue PW Moto. Okay. And, um, but point. before that, I was riding a kink, like I was just riding a kink in high school, and it was yeah. it. And, uh, 
And then it just sort of Joel, it all happened really quick. I mean, it was within one year yeah, like and it. I was still going to high school and uh, Joel just was like, you you want to come? And I think I got a call from Marco or maybe Stu. And I was like, yeah, sure. And Hell yeah. it's funny because I don't really, cons- now I guess I do, but I never really consider myself a person that was like, I was scared of, my, I don't know, I wasn't like scared of traveling. I didn't know any better. I yeah. think I was so young and like in a way dumb. They were like, you want to go to New York? I was like, yes. I've never yeah. been to New York. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Not, yeah, like why not? What's scary about it? And I just show up. Don't think about it. Yeah, I just showed up and just was like. Is it the Rocky Road Pools or the Road Pools? No, Road Pools yeah, 14. Road, proper Road Pools. Yeah, yeah. Right. it was like, I think there ended up only being like seven, maybe 16 or 17. Yeah. I don't know. I never of the actual one. Road Pools. And so Chase and I went and from Texas and like, um, and that was kind of it. I think that like that video part to Road Fools was the start. And yeah. then we immediately started working on Chill Bro. And that just sort of happened quickly. And uh, Grounded was happening at the same time. And so I was traveling all the time and like basically living in Austin. I moved to Austin one year after I graduated high school. But that year I spent traveling and like riding. And... Was there ever a time period? Because I remember, I think even like on Rock and Road Fools that we were on, I think you told me that you were pretty good at baseball and mm-hmm. that you were you know, like, oh, I think I probably asked you, like, oh, what would you do? I think maybe, like, a little ride interview or something. You said you'd be playing baseball. Was there, was there like, a time period where your parents were like, hey, you know, college is, college is cool, too? Yeah. Baseball and stuff like that? Like, maybe. more tradition, you know, like, yeah, Texas, yeah. you know, like, no, oh, go ride my parents were, pr- my dad grew up racing motocross, and he was always into, like, he had Baja bugs and all this okay. stuff. So he was psyched on this. Like, he was definitely, I think there was a time that, like, earlier on that I could have, got to probably play baseball somewhere Mm -hmm. i was being older and having a little bit different idea of how like college and like college sports work i was definitely good but i was never focused on it i was Mm -hmm. athlete i was an athlete i'm still i still play on a baseball team i'm like decent i'm good at it i guess play a baseball team too yeah you do no, I said you play on a baseball oh, yeah. team too. Yeah, like, like, it's a big group of guys. Social idea. Yeah. yeah, he does a lot of stuff. He's awesome. <laughs> and um, so puts a, I think puts there a was ba- a puts a baby on his back at the home run. <laughs> I home. played some tennis the other day with Logan her in the burn down the park of Yorn. I played some tennis. She was loving it. Um, Boy, the baby on yeah, the baby on his chest. She loved it. She just was like, <laughs> yeah, dude, um, tennis too. <laughs> so I think the oh, what were we talking about? <laughs> We're talking about your dad. Didn't oh. he invent the uh, jet ski? He did invent the thing? jet ski. Thing. That's what that's we were talking so about. Sick. Uh, your dad invented that thing? No, <laughs> but, but he, 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 <laughs> it was. It it's was totally right. not what, <laughs> what we were talking you about. He made his own, though, right? Oh, yeah, he's made a bunch of them. You know, the, like, the you know water jet pack right? yeah, that hooked like, to like a jet ski? Yeah. Um, he didn't invent it, but he made his own. Well, he did it. He didn't invent it, but he didn't. We, it probably he came some sort of nozzle or something. Yes, like, it probably came at the same time as other people that were doing it. So, like, he did have one that was online first. Uh-huh. Basically, my dad had grew up. He's a like a mad scientist. Can do all this crazy stuff. He has like mach- like machine like CNC machines in garages. Like has fun doing all this stuff. And um, that thing came out, and people were flying all over like the internet. Really, not in our. My parents lived out on the lake, but like yeah. my dad was just like, "How much are they?" And the guy, his friend, wanted to buy one. They're like twenty grand. My dad's like, oh, "Give me a week." And my dad was like, "Gets in the garage and builds one." He goes to his buddy who's a firefighter, gets a fire hose, and, like, builds this crazy thing. And then as it evolved, it got to where you were standing on, like, a, like boots, like a wakeboard boots, and yeah. you put, like, a swivel on it. And that was the first one to, like, go online was the one for the swivel. Mm. And we actually talked, or he actually talked to some patent people about the possibility. And it was just, like, a lot of work and, like, the way that, and he was, like, by this time, like, other ones were popping up online. My dad's not really, like, that, the guy that's, like, chasing that. He's, like, I just want to ride this thing. And like he, the <laughs> thing he just made it for fun. Yeah, and and they fly it all over the place, and then later made a remote control, and he would go outside by himself and like fly it around the lake all by himself. Just the jet skis just dragging behind. He has like a like a car remote control and just flies. That's amazing. Those yeah. things are crazy. Wait, he flies himself. He you flies himself. Stand, stand by no, he's, he's really standing with a remote. He's control. standing. 40 feet in the air with a remote control just pulling no the trigger way. and the jet ski just following him. I always thought that about those things. I was like, it's weird you have to have someone in the jet ski. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I think no. so too. So yeah, exactly. Got a remote and so he just <laughs> built this thing and it like has a, it pulls the lever and he's just like up there with an RC controller. Amazing. Yeah. Does he cool. live in Austin? I've never met him. Down I, would, I, would, I would like to meet him. That's so, cool. so funny story about that, about my dad so and we're gonna, jetpack. We're going to call this the tangent episode. I yeah, that's it. I'm, like, I'm, what I, were we talking about? And you're going to take well, it. Well, I don't totally know. different that's direction. A I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember which one I watched or listened to recently. But you guys were like, "Well, this is the longest one we've ever had." And I texted. I was like, "Mine's going to be longer." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I almost said earlier. I was like, "I do have to pick up my kid in about four hours." So we're in. We're in. 
Shakespeare's, you've, everyone I think in here has yeah. always have been to Shakespeare's in Austin. So this was a, a little while ago. Cause I've seen stories. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. It was obviously during Texas Toast R. or R. something. I don't remember timeline. Whatever. Matt, or maybe X Games in Austin. Whatever. Matt Hoffman's in town. And I'm walking to the middle of Shakespeare's, like the front room to the back room. And I'm with Devin Hutchins, which makes the story better because now there's someone that's there to like, oh shit, I was there. Mm-hmm. Matt Hoffman walks around the corner and we like stop. And I, you know, Hoffman's the man, obviously. I don't, but I don't know if he knows knows me, even though yeah. I've met him a hundred times yeah. and we've had conversations. You don't. You you wouldn't be surprised if Hoffman exactly. didn't. And I wouldn't be legit yeah, totally. Yeah, really and famous. I wouldn't be yeah. offended if he didn't, even though I've had conversations with him and like we like maybe comment back and forth on Instagram. I just don't know, you know. Yeah. Turns around the corner, he stops and looks at me. He goes, "Hey, Aaron." You know, he's always kind of like, "Hey, hey, Aaron." And I was like, "Hey, what's up, man?" He's like, "What was the word exactly?" He goes, "Your dad is my idol." <laughs> and Devin and I just look at each other, and I was like, "What?" He's like, "That jetpack thing." Oh he built God, that, that and right I was like, alley, "Yes." Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, 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 cool, man." And he's like, "All right, have a good night," and just walks away. And I'm, Devin and I just look at each other. And I was like, "He just said my dad is his idol." Yeah. Like Matt Hoffman in the middle of Shakespeare, just like had this moment and just like walks past me. No one, I mean, not that people wouldn't have believed me, but it wouldn't have been as cool if like someone wasn't there. You no, know like, he wanted to go ride that day. Oh yeah, he wanted to ride it. I feel bad. I mean, this dude's legs. I don't. I feel bad, but he would do it. I mean, he would yeah. do it. Yeah, he fine. would. He would be fine. He like flies around in his yard That's by true. himself with yeah. his fan. Yeah. He's I would just feel so bad if I was responsible, you know? What? Just oh. like, they're dangerous. Oh, they are dangerous. Oh, my God. Like, like, Matt, Matt really Howe. Matt yeah. Howe flew at, like, 60 feet, which is higher than, like, a telephone pole, like, above the lake. And basically, 60 feet, like, it comes out of the jet ski. And just, like, just stri- the And he just would stand. Bunch. He would just stand there. He just didn't move. And he's like, I don't really know how to move. So I just stand at 60 feet in the air above the lake and just hangs out. Because you could fall. I mean, if, you something could happen, if something could happen and then you just fall. Well, you also have to think. land on the jet ski. Right? Uh, I guess well, that's worst case scenario. It's worst case, but it's more unlikely when you're 60 feet in the air because you got 60 feet to get away from the jet ski. Mm-hmm. Um, it's worse when you're like 10 and 15 because then you have time to like come back and hit the jet ski. That thing's dad is actually the only the person ski. that hit the jet ski. I can and find the like, jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> you would find the jet ski. Walter would find the jet ski yes. too. <laughs> um, that all right, so back. Not think that's so scary. yeah, back. To, <laughs> no, not at all. He was like, like, chill. So back good. to baseball. In college, okay. so <laughs> way better. <laughs> that was the, that You want to know if he was going to be a pro baseball well, player? Well, just like yeah, was there ever, no. your, your parents ever said, like you know, they were always supportive of, of riding. And yes, stuff like that, so. they were always supportive of riding. My dad obviously was like super supportive. My mom was very supportive, but you don't know where that's going to go. Yeah. And like baseball, even if you're not going to be pro, you can get to college and you can free college. Yeah. And I, I could have probably pulled off some free college somewhere. At this point, it's been so long. I don't know how good I was. I think I was, I was really You're good. You're a fucking man in your head. But I don't. Yeah, <laughs> like you, I was good, but I don't know how good I was. Um, and then playing baseball the last five years or so, I was like, oh, I think I was actually kind of decent at this because I'm still kind of decent at it. Um, but I didn't care about it. I was over it at like 16 or maybe okay. 15. I was just like, I loved bike riding. I wanted to race and ride BMX, and that was it. And um, so it would have been very hard to pull that off like without caring or I didn't want to go I still to this day like seeing you guys like go to the gym and stuff like I'm like so envious and maybe not you but yeah so <laughs> envious of people that can take care of themselves like that and it's like something that's I'd rather go play tennis go play basketball play sports to do it it seems like you have enough other things to keep like different parts of your body feeling really good yeah and another I, thing I was going to say is you race BMX still too right yes which I usually keeps me going but COVID shut the track down in Austin so I've been I've been having a hard time so my legs are pretty jelly at the moment and like I you know the snowstorm and some other things yeah I, I feel and, like I'm I need some work to do jelly. yes I, jelly. exactly yeah. but, um so from so road full metro jam road fools <laughs> FBM so you were in, how'd you start riding for FBM um, Tina and Tom, they yeah. knew Crandall and they were like, would you want to ride for FBM? And I, I was like, uh, uh, I loved FBM. I had FBMs growing up. Yeah. I loved the videos. I think it was something I never participated in anything that was in the videos, but I just like loved, I mean, who didn't love all those FBM videos? And so, and then they were like, well, Tony Hamlin's on and Cameron Wood and they don't drink and they don't, it's going to be a whole different era. And I was like, oh, yeah. I'm down. And Tony Cardona. Yeah. So the four of us like never had done anything. We're going on trips and I'm sure Crandall was like, happening yeah. but yeah, that's the a kids trip. are eating cat yeah, is it crazy yeah, yeah. they're like they're <laughs> eating pizza and just like ride bikes is tony still <laughs> straight edge or something? no tony started drinking yeah it's crazy because yeah. they like i don't know if he's like, right now we're talking about tony hamlin yeah, yeah. i was talking about hamlin yeah yeah, yeah. i Cardona, talked to cardona's him. gone back and forth and then yep. cam's he's 
pretty straight. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, the, the one I know the least about is Cam at this point. We've talked a few times and like through text or through. Um, that was like a dream team. team, dude. It was crazy when I was a kid watching you guys. Like that FBM team was insane. Cam, Cam would do all those like insane threes off the side of the highway or whatever. Yeah. I mean, that was insane. he was in his prime doing that. It like, was crazy. Yeah, I felt like I felt like you from the outside. You being on FM. FBM didn't necessarily work, but I feel like it did work. Like, it did. It, like, Crandall sure. really did make yeah. it seem like you were such a good part of, of FBM, and I felt like throughout that whole process, like, just the, the colors on the bikes was done well, and, yeah. like, the way they played it up and stuff. It was hard to get the bike, the first one, to be fluorescent yellow and do the, like, Saved by the Bell theme yeah. stickers. It was like, he was like, this is what you want? Like, yeah. this is it? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is what we're doing. He was like, are you sure? Like, it was... Yeah, yeah he's used to, like, raw, black, and, Yeah, hardcore. exactly. And he was like, this is never going to work. And then they were gone, and he was like, oh, shit, okay. Angel of Death. How about yeah. we call it Angel of Death? And he actually is the one who came up with the idea for the keyboard grip. Oh really? Um, he wanted Grand to do, yeah, because we were always on trips, like texting and all this stuff. Have a cup of coffee. Yeah, and he was like, "But we can't do it." Yeah. So do you want to take it over to Odyssey? And I was like, "Yeah, let's take it over to Odyssey." And then cool. obviously, um, Odyssey immediately jumped on it, and that turned into tires and seats and all kinds of stuff. And um, it was right up. I and mean, we we discussed a couple things of how I would like to do stickers next or whatever and it was always like what could we do with texting or what could we do because we were we were always on trips texting and like ninety one thousand tweets. You saw that, yeah. I did. Try. I know. My goal I was to get to a hundred and just stop, and I just they can't get there. I can't get there. Fucking yeah, trips. I did. I mean, I, did, I think like eighty nine or ninety thousand of that was like all done. I was done with that like eight years ago. Yeah. And that happened in the back of vans. Yeah, I um, feel like you were one of those guys. First off, you're probably like one of the most modern street riders to buy houses and make a good living from BMX. And at the time, too, you're like so far ahead of being like big on social media before anyone thought that that was like a smart Wait thing to do. Wait a second. What? Card full. Let's go back to for when the, the whole card thing happened. Yeah, sorry to everybody for the audio. So there's 10, 15 minutes of crap audio in there. So yep. um, Thank God you're a genius. You're going to figure it out. Well, I have at least check. I get paranoid and check everything. Um, I was talking to him and... I think that you might be one of the first, like, only street riders to have, like, bought houses, made a living, been smart with it. Not been smart, but you were just, you, you made the money. And it was from street riding, but also, like, social media skills. You made amazing parts, thought differently outside the box, and, like, understood, like, product sells. And with my name on it, it's going to make you more, like, successful with all this. What was it? You had thoughts behind that. Yeah, I think like. it was half and half. I understood how to do something with it after the fact, but really I was just doing what I loved. Like I loved bright colors and crazy things. And I just thought like you'd see so many people they'd be like, what do you want your bike to look like? And they're like black with this. And like, nothing's wrong with that. That just wasn't who I was. And I'd be like, no, I want this. I want the opposite. And, um, it always stood out. It always stood out. And that, not, that wasn't always good, but it, but in the end, it did get a following, and like I, I, I'm in a couple like Facebook groups where people are like still swapping parts and bikes, and it, it's in, that like watermelon bikes still. I still people like people oh, still. It's sweat insane. It. Yeah. I used like, to go to different countries, and the whole yeah. complete bike area was Aaron Ross bikes. It was yeah. just like filled with these bright colored bikes, and even like the scooters would have your grips yeah. on them. I in Australia, like, the scooters were like Australia. The, yeah, it was like the number one selling your, grip your that grip. ever happened in BMX and in scooters. Yeah, and I was like, well, let's just. And they, the the majority of the colors we made were for the Australian scooter community in the keyboard grips. It was crazy. Yeah. And so, then, like, how much? I mean, shout out Australia. You, you get a portion there in those houses. You get a portion <laughs> of every grip sale, basically. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. get like, and all the bikes, the completes, and the like frames, they all yeah. did really well. The majority of where and you I, had the signature shoe from Etnies. That too. was what I was getting to. Is the shoe yeah. is where I got lucky and made the money. Nice. The, I had we designed the first one, just the the, the low top, the number mid, mm-hmm. and it was, or sorry, the number, and the it was. Just I kind of copied it off of the Lely or the the Ruben or the Taj, any of those shoes that Etnies had done. And I was just like, took what you liked. Yeah, it? I took like I tried to go back to what I had liked and what like a durable BMX shoe, and then it grew into the mid very quickly, and the mid just took off in the Midwest and like I mean everywhere in other countries, but like the Midwest and like those the first year it was the check showed up and I was like oh dang how second. much was it the first year yeah. the first check I got was five grand okay. And that I was like, damn, this is crazy. And the second year, I it was thirty grand. Oh wow! Yeah. And the third year, it was more. Wow. And nice. I just remember holding it, and being like, <laughs> that's crazy. So it just took off it over just, the years, dude. And like they were making colors after colors after colors. Yeah. And I, I, at this point, I remember going to the meeting, and they'd be like, this one sells. I was just make those. Like I didn't. I was like, and 
and I liked the shoe. It did work great for riding street, yeah, riding yeah. BMX. It, it did work good because I was doing a lot of telops. It was helpful, but they were they were wild shoes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would not be where I am today if I did not get the opportunity with the Etni shoe. Even the all the Sunday and Odyssey stuff sold great, and we made we made money and like we did great. But mm-hmm. like. The that shoe. shoe, and then it went. I would have never thought about down. that. I thought it was the grips, and because all the stuff remember, I'd see at the skate parks, yeah, I was like, no. "Damn, Aaron Ross, Aaron no. Ross, Aaron Ross." But Aaron you know, Ross the, the margin on some of that's so small. The shoe was like, it was like a dollar a pair, and mm. that was like we we saw. I mean, I think in the end we sold like two hundred thousand or two hundred fifty thousand shoes. So you made two hundred fifty thousand dollars, give or take. Yeah. Over a period of time. <laughs> nah, uh, you were you were gonna ask. You were you were, you were waiting to ask. plus salary. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, just, exactly. That's just a nice and, little bonus that and, you didn't expect so, to just be like Doom, exactly. And so I just didn't. You know, I took that and bought a house and like tried to put. I tried to, you know, I couldn't even buy it town because I was like self-employed so my parents co-signed for me, but I was young and I just was always wanting. To, I always wanted to stop giving money to the landlord. Yeah. I was just like, this seems crazy. So what like, year did really you first smart. buy first buy a house? Um, let's see, 2007. So probably like 2010. Oh, okay. Maybe 2009. Okay. Yeah, I probably... I've owned it. What's today? Uh, just after the crash. I've owned it for too, so eleven. Time, yeah. I, I've owned it for eleven, going on twelve years this August. Okay. August will be twelve years. So cool. however long. That's awesome. And then very um, smart too. Just be that young and be like, I'm gonna put all this money I'm making to this. Yeah. And I did like a short term mortgage because I was and, like, I didn't. I just wanted to pay it off and like get to where I could just. So I just like dumping money into it. Had roommates forever. I always had roommates. Um, and so I got a bunch of that Shakespeare's money because I had a bunch of BMXers that were working at Shakespeare's. And they'd pay me in all their tips, and I just had a safe in the house. And I was just dumping. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And that's actually so. Then I told myself I was like, I'm going to buy another one. So I bought another house that I didn't live in, but just bought a rental house. And then then I felt like I was in a good spot. And then I bought the car, but I told myself I couldn't the buy Porsche. the car till I bought another thing that was smart because I didn't think the car was so that the car smart. Was like yeah. the first toy, like yeah. just let's have fun. But then now the, the car is worth. Maybe yeah. m- you know more. Really? It, yeah, the car's only gone up. And you don't really I, hear that with cars. You know, if if uh, I por- painted Porsche, it, Porsches have always yeah. they, they always kind of grow, and then just the demand for Porsche will last like ten years. So yeah, if you so get a Porsche, it's like a car that gains value. The older yeah. Ones do. Well, like even huh. even 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 my car is like I bought that for four thousand dollars, and I could sell it for like thirty. That's a four, Porsche. Thirty or forty? No, it's not. But I'm saying like Those it's a classic cars, car yeah. huh. like that. Like so, I always so, heard like cars are yeah. just like people buy them, but totally and say new cars. Like I can make money off it. I mean, it's a 1980s car, and they're yeah. just harder and harder and harder to get. And like something people want, it's in demand still. Yeah. And yeah. After it, I, mine was in great shape, but huh. I did some work to it and was going to paint it. And once I get it painted, it'll be. I mean, if I paint it, it'll probably be worth double. Yeah. What I paid for, so much, maybe more than that. Both these houses bought the dope car. The car the, doesn't count because I'm. I hope to never sell it, so the car doesn't. It counts, but it doesn't count for like. But it's a nice asset, yeah, like so, something cool that you like, just exactly. like the house. Like it's a yeah. sweet thing. And are you living with the roommates at the time when you're still yeah, doing yeah. all this? Yeah, so, I, I always had the roommates. Even when Bethy and I got married, in the they we had lost some, but we'd always had one because it was a three bedroom house. Oh, so she kept, moved into that house. Yeah, and we just kept one. We always just kept one. We and then the la- when we moved into our newest house, and then we knew we were having the baby. We weren't. We were never gonna. We planned to never have a roommate again. Damn, you're but a that smart was guy. like, you know, I just. I felt like we would lived on those houses with Chase and all those guys and just like we're all paying money to this guy. I was like, what if I could be the guy? Mm-hmm, Not yeah. to like make money, just to stop waste. I felt like I was wasting did it. it. Did and it then ever... everyone could get cheap, the cheapest rent. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Did it ever produce like them. weird interactions with people where they're like, ah, um, I don't want to pay you this much. Uh, no, everyone no. was always pretty cool. I yeah. had some rad roommates like Baz Keep lived in my house for like wow. two years. Oh, wow. Robin Finland lived in my house for a minute. So it was some always. Ri- yeah. Like, yeah. Um, Mike Gonzalez, who works at Odyssey yeah. now, who then married my sister later. What? So it's like, yeah, so it's, you know, it's, it's been a, he rat. owes you a lot. Yes. Yeah. He didn't, they've dated after that, but like, you know, as much as, you know, I'm kind of all over the place at the end of the day, like I come from a family of like BMX and like, we are pretty rooted into BMX, which is right. Even though I'm scattered and we do all this other crazy stuff, like there's nothing more than like my sister grew up racing and like it's rad. So she goes and rides mountain bikes or rides pump track with Mike and like cruises and that's so awesome. it's rad. So it's good. And I'm glad that she found someone that she can do something like that. And like, so what, uh, kind of circling back cause to the, to the bikes in the, so you had the watermelon bike, the orange bike, and then the ads and all that stuff. What, what was kind of the, the end? Why did it, I mean, to me, I feel like if you came out the watermelon bike today, I feel like kids would still go nuts over it. So it, why got to make it retro eventually? Well, we, we, <laughs> we, we, we talk about it every year. Bauer and I yeah. had this conversation last week. We want to do it. 
it's just so much harder than it was at one point. I say you just come. hold off for a long time and then we're going to do back. it. One day it's going to happen. I don't know which but bike, I'm, if it's but the even orange be, one or the like 55 but and be yeah. like, damn, here comes those residual <laughs> But I'm saying even, even at the time, you're like, all right, well, we did the watermelon bike. That did great. We did the orange bike. I assume that did well yeah. as well. And then like, oh, the strawberry bike or whatever you know like yeah. the polka dot bike or something like that like why why did it stop why did you just start coming out with regular colors um well Bo- at one Lemmy's, point why did you start start coming out with boring colors? yes yeah. um it got harder to do okay. we were painting those bikes like they were all getting powder coated. they're getting they were crazy yeah and it was getting harder to do the the like price to do it was getting crazier to do the tires to match the rims and the spokes and the hub it was just getting wilder yeah um, and then I also had felt like I did it for so long and I wanted to put a video part out where I rode a black bike. So it would be like, not about the bike. It was just like, here I am. I'm right. I like, I ride bikes also. And like, yeah. um, not I, that I, I liked when you did that. Yeah. It was like, nice. It was like, okay. It's yeah. Nice. I think like, people like appreciate it. I'm like, I still am good. I'm mean, not that I think I'm good, but like, it you wasn't need the bike. It's not just about the bike. It's not gimmicky. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, I, I can also ride the bike. It's not about what it's and so. It, I think I need to do that for myself too, just to feel like I was out there, like in the streets, like, because like, I think sometimes that stuff like clouded what I I really was riding in the streets. I was filming at night. I was get chasing spots. I was traveling all over the place, doing all this stuff, but it didn't seem like it because I'm not like, I don't come off as the most hardcore guy, which I am down with. I don't care, but I but I felt like oh I could I am though like I'm I'm tra- chasing tricks across the country and stuff, and so I felt like this one will be about that. And it was fun to do. It was fun to like, and it felt good for me too to just be like, there is nothing about this. It's about the trick. It's about doing this. And yeah. it was fun. Was that a sentiment that you were getting from other people? Um, I think a mixture. I think it was like we kind of ran through a bunch of the best bikes and we were kind of getting a little lost in like what we were doing, mm-hmm. like what bikes was next. Like we'd already kind of hit the nail on the head with all the others mm-hmm. and it was like getting like, well, oh, maybe this color or maybe that oh, color. Oh, sorry. I meant like the core attitude. Like, oh, like well, in that's the sense what, of. No, in that's what I, of... I felt like a lot of confidence behind those first few bikes. Okay. And then when I got to the next ones, I didn't, I was kind of like, oh, this one's like not the, the story behind it's not the same. And like, it didn't feel it. So you felt like you were reaching. So then it felt like it was like, you know, messing with that, the other side of it where you're like, why, this isn't more important than this other stuff. And so you kind okay. of started to go, well, I just want to go back to clean slate and start over. And then we, and then we did start over and did fun colors, but the bikes weren't, the whole bike wasn't the color. Yeah. And that's what's become the hardest part. We talk about it every year when building a new bike. I'm like, oh, if we're going to do that, maybe we should bring back this one bike as a limited run. But they're just like doing some of it is so hard. Yeah. Like, I mean, when I, uh, I, I did, makes sense. I filmed one of those fork uh, spotlight parts, like mm-hmm. the source spotlight stuff. And all, pretty much every single fork was black there and they don't come out. Yep. All, every fork is black. There's no such thing yep. as like a, a, a pink fork or a green yeah. fork. Or mine mine always have a color fork. Or chrome. Mine always, yeah. mine, the last few, all the forks always match the frame where we try. Yeah. But I mean, even, even our 25s and stuff like that pretty much only come in chrome and yep. black, right? Yep. Yeah. So it's yeah. like anything it's, other than that com, coming b- back from like the, the fucking yeah. seafoam green and yep. Kelly, you know, like green and, and like there's like six different colors of green, let alone like I think everything the, else. It's so uh, weird phases, that it's like eventually everyone will get bored of the boring colors totally. yeah. and go yeah. back to and I think crazy the, like, and then that gets old and the back and forth, back play, and forth. The, wherever the where the manufacturers or whatever in Taiwan, yeah. they hate the color. Like they hated the colors. Oh, I'm sure. They just like they just want to make the you know. So well, I it makes it was... it makes it harder for a shop, of totally. course. You yeah. know, like I want this fork, but it just doesn't need to be like piss yellow. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> you know, like totally. So, I think it, the matching matching frame fork and bar combo is so sick. It's yeah. A, yeah I, I'm so like, surprised that so it's many... not more more frequent yep. these yeah. days. Like, it really is. I remember wanting to have like a bike like Sexton's because he had yeah. like. The red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. I think he did the yeah. bronze one, too. Yeah. yeah, that bronze was... I had a bronze one, too. Funny story. I remember I was on Fox for a while, and Robbie was a team manager, and I would have... I think, you know, I went through a few bikes, but I had the all-orange soda bike. And I would go on trips, and he'd be like, that thing is so ugly. That th- No one would ever buy this. No one ever... Do- whatever. And they sold... You know, we sold out of all the tires. We sold out of everything. Yeah. And then years later, Colt came out with a... They'd only done, like black and raw and like whatever and then like one of their first bikes they did that was colored was fluorescent orange or whatever and i remember texting robbie a photo of it and just being like what's this and he was like that's what they wanted that's like <laughs> that's what the kids wanted and i was like yeah i, I know yeah yeah that was smart that was trying to get you to well, stop was, making them yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh they're ugly yeah. stop making them yeah. he's like Pow, let's I make these like, I, I think i said something to him. i was like oh i could sell mine when they didn't want them and he was like okay was like, you know, whatever and i thought was i thought it was funny because Whatever. A little industry beef. Yeah. 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 Funny industry beef. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
Um, what do you got for me? I don't. I need to. I was going to say, oh, too. Uh, what about that time you went to Japan and you didn't eat rice? Oh, gosh. You know what's funny about that? I think about that story and I like, or not that story, I think about me not eating rice. I grew up eating rice my whole life, but I ate like Mexican brown rice. I didn't know. And I was there. And I was like, I don't know. What is this white rice? I've never had it. I, I, now I'm like, I ate rice my whole life. <laughs> and right. like, but you, I, but you didn't eat it, right? I didn't. No, yeah, because he went, to never, Japan, he went to Japan and avoided rice. I was, I was 18. I was like, I was. 18. I mean, that's still. Yeah. I mean, you could be You're probably six hungry the whole trip. And I'd be yeah, like, I was. And I, Japan, we were like, it was. It was Dirty Dan, me, Ryan Schur, and I can't remember someone. Doyle was there for a minute. So God, Doyle must have been just looking at you like yeah. you were a psycho. And we were. T- we had did the little point and shoot digital cameras, and we'd take a picture of food signs, and we'd like go to places and be like. Do you have this? Mm. Like, do you have this burger? Can you please bring me the burger? I'm like, nah. And, and <laughs> yeah. now I've been back since, and I've like love course, eating yeah, everything. Course, and yeah. like, but I think about that as like I had some funny quotes about rice, and I was like, I liked rice. I just have never seen like we never eaten white rice. Yeah. Like, we always ate like you know I have a pretty big Mexican side of my family, and like we eat all kinds of Mexican food. And like, anyways, just, so it was blown out of proportion. Yeah, but I didn't even. Still, but still I didn't bizarre. even grasp it till like years later. I was like, that was so weird of me. Like I didn't. I didn't. Pro- <laughs> I was just so young. Didn't was like it like avocado too, or no? Oh yeah, I, was, I love avocado now though. Yeah, but you. I was pretty picky. I was pretty picky. <laughs> I was. I like. I ate like hamburgers and chicken strips and pizza, and that was it. That was, I mean, that was all I knew. But I was young. Yeah, no, it's yeah, all good. It's a normal younger diet. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. eating yeah. whatever the hell. Like, yeah, just like or not whatever know. the hell. Just you're like, like your food this things, is what like, I eat. This is easy. I yeah. eat this. Uh, I knew where I was going. Was Austin? That was a, the the rice was a placeholder while I got gathered my thoughts. Uh, Austin, I I consider Austin like a pretty core BMX town. Mm -hmm. And obviously you were involved with Empire from the very beginning and stuff like that. But there's still like, I don't know, this uh, like the the terrible one phase of like money and 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 profit and, you know, the the recycling of the, you know, that one graphic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, was that. And that seemed to like perpetuate Austin, especially like kind of in like early two thousands. You know, like was that ever a feeling that you got that like, oh, I don't really fit in in that aspect. Um, I because t- obviously, obviously, you fit in now, so it's like, but was there ever like, oh, you I know. think I was lucky and got away with some stuff because I was always everyone's friend. Mm-hmm. I was always there, and like, you knew me well enough to not really not like me, but to understand maybe that like. I have an opportunity to like do this and I have an opportunity to like, and I, I always took it as more of a, <laughs> I wanted to respect Sunday and Odyssey and empire that they gave me the opportunity. And I was like, I want to work hard for you. That doesn't mean that I'm going to like sell out. Mm-hmm. This is stuff I enjoy. Like people would be like, Oh, I would never do this and like ride for hot wheels. And I'd be like, I grew up playing with hot wheels. Yeah. I love hot wheels. And yeah. so I rode for hot wheels for years and stuff like that. I'm like, this isn't selling out to me. Selling out would be like, if I, I can't even think of something, but you know, like wore a Ronald McDonald's jet suit or something, yeah. you know, like I think that's, I don't eat McDonald's. I wouldn't do that. Sponsored by a white rice company. Yes. yes. At the time that would have been <laughs> no. selling out for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I probably would have done it, but, um, but you know what I'm saying? So I think people got to know me well and I was in the scene enough that like, I, I, I think that kind of goes back to the like core side of it. Like yeah. at the end of the day, I was, I was putting in work, I was filming, I was shooting photos the real way. I just had a different way of going about it. And then, you know, I would put stuff on social media and I would do whatever I just thought, but I, me, I love talking to people. I love meeting new people and social media was a new way to continue those conversations and make new ones. And so I would sit in the back of the van and like update kids on Twitter, like what was happening in the van, which no one had ever done that besides, yeah. besides road pools, maybe, but like, even that was like not, I mean, not a direct connection. Exactly. Like this is happening right now. And I just thought this is so cool. You can like talk to people. And like, I remember Chase would be like, this is so dumb. This is the, this is the worst stop that. And then now I'm, I give Chase a hard time because he's putting out videos all the time and like yeah. loves Instagram. I just saw that earlier on and just understood like the benefit in that. Um, yeah. You were the most, yeah, one think, of the most famous writers ever. Yeah. You know? I mean, and it was, you embraced like, it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I enjoyed it. I, yeah. it was never, it's, I have more social, I don't say social, but like posting anxiety today than I ever did. And I think sometimes it's more because mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, like, what am I don't, like, what is this for? What is that? You know, just like things like that. When like before I was just like, this is, this is what I'm doing. This yeah, I'm I don't doing. care. This is yeah. because I mean, it was a, I mean, your Twitter was, it came across as like a stream of consciousness yes. at a point, yes. you know, like my, that sh- was something... my shoes are black and they don't match my jeans. Yes. Did you go like, look at some of these? Twitter no, I didn't okay, actually, but I just, that's probably, there's 90, They're, there's 90,000. <laughs> there's a good chance that's one of them. They're awful. So. Um, <laughs> every thought, every 
<laughs> so why do you why do you like take so much thought into posting now? Um, I think it's just like I I don't as much today. The last year I finally chilled out. I think the two years before that, I think I was scattered and I was like trying. I was like riding bikes, driving cars, playing golf, like doing all these other things. And mm-hmm. you felt this like little bit of like guilt that you weren't doing your thing every day that they think you should be doing or you uh-huh. should be, maybe you should be doing. But that was never you, right? You yeah, exactly. But I think stuff. because I'm getting older and you feel like you're like you, if there's ever a time to do a better job of it, it seemed like maybe the time when it's closer to the the end, I guess you could say. And so you just have this little bit of like, and then now I sort of am in a happy place where I'm like, this is who I am. This is yeah, what I do. Yeah, and, like, and like I post cars, I post whatever I want. I mean, slower at a slower like pace than I did maybe at one point. And like clips are slower to come out and whatnot. But I'm happy with where I'm at. I'm happy with who I am. And like, I'm in, not that I ever wasn't happy. I think you were just, just worried too much about what other exactly. people were thinking. I was thinking about it career. more than I'd ever thought. And I think that was, I talked to Jim about this the other day because we're coming out with new bikes and I was like, oh, I want to do another of this and another of that. But we did a bike a couple of years ago, the, this blue one, and it came with like, it was like hot pink cranks and like yellow wheels. And it was insane. And it was, and he was like, yeah, you just didn't really like that one. And I was like, I just felt like I'm not at a place where like that obnoxious of a bike, I'm good enough to like feel like, but I can still like, my bike riding outshines the wildness of it. Yeah. When I was younger, I was like, yeah, I'm doing good stuff. I'm like coming up with tricks and like doing stuff people haven't seen. So like the bike is irrelevant. And now I'm like, yeah, I'm not trying to be like, yeah, my bike's ugly and I'm like stumbling around and like, you know, so, <laughs> you know, like, and so I was worried about it, but like, and now I'm like, I found a habit. I just like, I like my pink bike. I think it's cool. It's like a flavor. It's me, but it's mm-hmm. like, I'm not trying to like, shove this like wild high water thing and yeah. so even jim understood he was like yeah i guess that was that one was wild and i like to stick to one or two colors and that that bike was like three or four yeah. and i was like this is just like so scattered and and so that was kind of that mentality of like feeling that like oh, i just like don't can i post this today and like sometimes i feel like i want to post like all this car stuff or all this golf stuff and like just feel like it's not my audience and mm, now yeah. i'm just like i don't care like yeah. do you do life. do you do the i'm um, gonna stack a few clips in a day and sprinkle them out over the week or two no, no? mine are on i usually don't post them that day but I, I i usually post them all i post it the next day i'm usually like I, I think it's one of those weird mental things where you're like i rode today so i'll let them know tomorrow that i rode today like yeah. it makes you but yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but no, I don't, I'm not good at holding on to clips. I mean, I'm good at holding on to clips for a video part, but yeah, like yeah. Instagram clips. Um, I see some people like out riding street and they're like, film the clip, they hand them the phone and they're just like new shirt. Boom. New shirt. Like yeah. put the thing on gram, which is cool. Yeah. I just always have like, I feel I like I'm someone who has <laughs> done sorry. a better job of being in the moment than my Instagram or Twitter told you or showed you. So like I'll film something and then my phone goes away and then at night I process it and like put it on the gram or the next morning. Yeah. And like I'm not someone who like stops to be like, oh, okay, let me go take care of this. Unless it's like work related or like borough related, like I'll go and deal with it. But like I've always been like, oh, tomorrow morning I'll like go through these and post it or whatever. And I feel like it doesn't seem like that if you know me. Like I don't yeah. – I seem more like into the Instagram or into this. And like I've never gone – I've I think I've gone live on Instagram like twice in my life. I don't post selfies. In my, I like that's not – I, I yeah, have like more no, social no, anxiety than you would think. No uh-huh. YouTube or anything like no. that, right? Yeah. How do you feel about your writing right now? You were saying into your career about five minutes ago. Um, do you feel like that or have you found like more like, nah, this in the end. You got more in you. No, I know there's more in me. I feel good. I filmed some clips yesterday. And like you say, you know when you get a clip, you're like, okay, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would imagine. I feel yeah. like I think I have found you have so a, much more in you. a happy place in like easing up on some of it, less tech, less shoving too much in it. Uh-huh. And I actually think my writing's gotten cleaner and better. And it's like more about like the popped three. And like maybe that's not for everyone, but I, I grew up racing, so like having a little more of that flow, which I think for a long time I got really focused on like doing something no one has done or like Mm-hmm. attaching it all together yeah like bar manual drop bar manual like but, but, which kids do all the time now but like it was big back it yeah. was bigger when i when i was doing some of it and then like feeble 180 bar to fakey rail to manual you know just all this stuff, stuff. that like you might not do or it could take three different oh, take, sessions exactly just, and like that's gnarly because once it, you're trying to keep one up in yourself at that level oh. of tech because you're like the god of that kind of writing it, at the time, you yeah, know, yeah. And, like, I, and everyone wanted to be like you, so they're trying so hard to catch up. Yeah, to you. and it was like you so to so stay you'd, there is not show up at a spot and you'd be like, okay, next time I'm gonna do 180 whip to backwards, yeah. like to just fake you. And I'm just crazy. like, that's gonna take me days, and like, <laughs> and that's not it gets sore. That's not fun. Could yeah. I maybe do it? Maybe, but like, it's gonna take everything. All the stars in the world have to align. And now I'm just like, like yesterday I filmed the clip I was psyched on, but like it's relatively chill in the comparison of like when I was thinking back in the day I'd want to do a barsman in it or like 
something else out. And now I'm just like, just do it good. Just do yeah, this really yeah, good no. and don't make it look so – because sometimes you get done and you'd be like, I was like, I'm holding on the bar all weird, but I did the craziest thing you know I could do, but it wasn't pretty. Um, and so now I think I appreciate that a lot more. That's and cool. Like, and, I, and it's easier because I'm doing tricks that I was doing – when I was in high school or in like the first few trying years trying to do them really good for footage. Yeah. And like yeah. people loved it then. And I think people see that casualness. I feel like I'm doing a little bit more of like the trail street riding and enjoying and it. And now they have the free coaster on too. When yeah. you put that on, I was like, it's going to be the, another whole another decade, two decades, three decades yeah. for you. It was like I a was game changer. Pretty against the, the coaster forever, yeah. but I had a bad ankle and I couldn't, I couldn't handle the, the, the kickback uh, from the, the rolling out uh -huh. anymore. And I held off for a year. Like I kept yeah, thinking about it. Forever. it. And I just finally one day was like, I can't do it anymore. I have to like do this. For your riding, it makes so much sense. It does. Sense. It makes, and when you put it on, it was like, that yeah. And now is I can you. like turn around and like keep speed without pedaling and like yeah. pushing all the time. And like, and you're uh, always going backwards. Yeah. Why not have a free coaster? <laughs> and so now I've I've grown to obviously really enjoy it. And my foot, I could land backwards again with it because mm -hmm. there was not this immediate engagement that was hurting mm -hmm. my ankle. And so I actually started doing 540s again and like 180 whips down mm. stuff and like 180 bars when I like was like, well, I'm going to do a five. I have to go forward. I can only go forward. And that was like whipping stairs and three and stairs. And, and now I feel like that opened a whole new window. And then my, I had surgery and my ankle got better and things like that. So like it was a mixture, but I couldn't 180, like a 10 stair or something with the coast, the cassette anymore. Like I just couldn't do it. Like I, my foot didn't yeah. work. Yeah. And so free coaster chilled out bikes yeah and steez a little bit of, oh, <laughs> new aaron Ross. i a like little, it hopefully some steez. no is it, it yeah, is good though because I, I remember like going on a couple of etnies trips with you and it was like you just you set the bar so high where you were like this is going to be 100 tries yeah always, you know always. Like, it was always 100 it tries it was like and, and it's not it's not sustainable to a degree yeah. you know Men mentally yeah. yeah when every time yeah. you go film you're like this is going to be a I mean, fucking I, head case you I need would to have... get those first second try things once in a while to be like yes. yeah like... and it ruined i mean that we talked this the other night talking about x games like that ruined my x games runs too because i would go to x yeah. games and try to like do up rail 180 to fakey turn around to like cat and like you can't Instead do that of in just one doom, minute doom, doom, doom. and yeah. i was I, at the time i was i had enough tricks and i was good enough that i could have I'm not saying I would have won, but I could have. You could have if you laced that. Yeah, show. like you did got play the, got, the in, so. got the invite back. Yeah, I could have yeah. got the invite back. Yeah, I, I did you had a pretty good X Games career I in the beginning there. I have four medals, yeah. but really? from the international ones. Mm -hmm. And then once it got to LA, I just got into my own head about doing. I think I just love doing stuff people didn't do, mm -hmm. and so that was cat half cabs and fakies and fakey rails and like the really hard shit. Yeah. But doing it first try is mm -hmm. impossible basically. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so like trying to shove that into a, maybe now today with a, cause I didn't have a, a coaster, maybe I could have swung it, but like I should have just done my tricks and like, I probably would have done pretty good. I remember hearing stories like, all you needed was a bar spin. And I'd be like, I was sitting there doing fakies the whole run. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. whatever. Um, I'm happy with how I rode those things and like stuck to who I was and like did my thing. And like, you could always say I could do this or that, but it is what it is. Cool. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's always good to hear. I think we always we have this topic a lot. Is you need to find your happy spot and yeah. not make it so difficult that you can't enjoy yourself anymore. Because there's a lot of people that that want to just see you ride bikes. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, the the best thing ever every single time. Yeah. You know, like as long as it's... I feel like someone like Burns, he went to X Games and jumped out of the park or whatever. Yeah. And I feel like. That was him winning the contest to his fans. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was bigger than him winning the contest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, he's the dude that jumped out of the park. And, like, Tom Dugan, like, <laughs> was so ridiculous. it was insane. Tom Dugan goes and does that and then gives the middle finger to the camera and never gets to come back. Well, that builds Dang Dang. That yeah. built who Tom Dugan is. And, like, that's the we, the reason that he's the legend he is is because of those moments. And I feel like me sticking to doing fakey stuff and then maybe pulling it was part of what made those things seem harder you. or real. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, I probably could have done a 360 or a truck and like a 540 and like pulled it, but like it would have just blended in maybe. Yeah. And I just, you know, I got lucky and pulled a couple and. It was like that. It's like the, the go for the gold, first or last. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it's not a, like I thought like that. It's just, it's just who I was. <laughs> yeah. I just was like, and then I'd get done first. and like, I should have yeah. done <laughs> last. <laughs> tell it. But it is what it is, you know. Yeah, I, and now I'm glad I didn't change anything. And I <laughs> yeah, man. Anything. Like you did it so well with just being basically a core street rider. Yeah. Like you had some good contest results, but when it came down to the big money ones, you were you said that was kind of like already towards the end of your yeah. good results in X Games. So. Trying, trying to see what shoes you were on. Real, some etnies on they are on any yeah. so you do you still get any still flows you stuff are you yes i don't know I, the full flows yes flows, yeah i was off the team uh i don't remember the timeline but like man, six months or a year into filming that odyssey still standing part okay and 
I don't remember. It could have been right at the time. I don't remember detail. Yeah. I don't remember the timeline. Anyways, and I would have ridden Etnies forever. Um, I've always been into shoes. I've always liked shoes. So I've always bought shoes outside of it, like running shoes or whatever. I just like shoes. And when Pova left, he was like, okay, I'm out, you know, whatever. You're going to email Kristen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm never going to email Kristen. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to buy shoes and buy whatever I want and do whatever I want. And when Pova came back, I was like, he was like, Hey, if you ever need anything. And I was like, can I still get these golf shoes? And I get all these golf hookups and like these crazy one-off Nike shoes and these Adidas shoes and stuff. I didn't want to lose. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, just ride in them. And I was like, well, that's perfect. And so that's where we're at. I get shoes. I ride in them. And like, it feels good. It feels at home. I, I wrote in some other stuff for a little bit and I never really, I was fine with it, but it was never really like, I'm not like Nike. I've, I've ridden at yeah. me since I was 14 or 13 or 14 Doesn't years feel old. Normal. It never felt right. Yeah. Even though I maybe looked good or it looked cool, it never felt right. And like I've ridden in vans and it didn't feel right. Um, I think because I just have so much loyalty to what we've already talked about with Etnies and what they did for me and what Pova did. But when Pova was gone, I kind of was like, eh, I'm not going to email well, Kristen. Yeah. Like, so what, were you wrapped up in when Pova got let go too, or was it kind of like, it was they, before they, it was just yeah. time. It was cuts yeah. and stuff. And I think like, um, it just seems so crazy when you're selling 250,000 shoes. It had been a like, while. Yeah. I mean, that had been five years before. And I think it was just like, things were narrowing down and, yeah. um, dudes were coming up and, you know, and. I have, you know, I'm proud to say at this point, like I've never thrown a fit. I've been lucky to like get all the opportunities I've had. I told Pova, thanks for everything. Yeah. Have a good one. And that was the end. Like the phone call was like two minutes. We talk all the time, but yeah. like, that yeah. conversation was like, we didn't, there was no talking. There was no negotiating. There was no, like, I was like, cool. Thank you for everything. That was sick. Like yeah. it, it was coming. Like I knew uh, this is all coming at some point. And, uh, did Pova actually have that conversation with you when he got you on? Because he always says, oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah, says yeah. the this that, that Pova is the one that I always quote. It says like, "Hey, this isn't forever. I, one totally. day this one day this totally. will end, and I want it you to be aware of that. So when it actually does happen, that yep. we're still friends." Yep. He, like, I think the phone yeah. call for the ending started with, "This isn't going to be a fun one." I'm like, "It's all good, man. We, I've been waiting for it for a while." And yeah. That was it, and it was like we had the no, conversation. Cool. I was like, "Boom!" And yeah. like, and you know, I, I think I also got to separate friendship and business. Yes. Yeah, and like you've had your shit lined up anyway, so it wasn't like, oh god, like yeah. I mean, it's never easy like... to lose no. money, but like you're hoping that you can come out the other end without feeling like you're like, damn, I like blew all of this, or like not yeah, just that's the what money, I'm saying. just like you, 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 you were smart like... with it the whole time. And I always wanted to have love for BMX, and so sometimes I struggled with like whether or not doing jobs inside BMX after that. Like I never wanted my favorite thing in the world to be something I hated or you like never want to be like a team manager or something Is yeah that what it's tough i don't we we've we've talked about that for years and years and years and i just like don't know if it's in me but like i love being on the trips with the dudes and i love being the older guy with gary or like helping zach and like driving the van and like so it's this weird line of like i don't know if i would be good at booking plane tickets but I'm down to help you like do everything on the trip. So I it's think, like this weird, like, yeah. I, don't... I think it's so cool for brands to keep people like you and Gary who are, exactly. you're older, but you still are working as hard as you can when you're in the van yes. with everyone. Cause that motivates, cause it's not always how much of your signature stuff is selling when you're on a team it's like everyone's so motivated by you and gary yes. they're going harder and, and maybe brett's signature stuff is selling and you're part of that because you're motivating him yes like, and i think that's just like as hard as him being on trips with these guys both teams sunday and odyssey but like it's such a good friend group of dudes that are on a team that you like they have a lot of they have <laughs> a lot of Ruse, respect Ruse telling you to put the mic yep. closer to you. <laughs> they they have a lot of respect for us and obviously like it's funny to for gary i'm sure it happens on bands too with like Jacob Cable or whoever yeah. was younger, but like dudes are like, how old are you, Gary? And Gary's like, I was riding in X Games before you were born. And like dudes are like, <laughs> and like they can't grasp it. Even Speedy yeah. this week was like, you did what? And like he doesn't, you know, he's so he's twenty and he's like, didn't I don't even think he ever saw the still standing part. Like he yeah. just like has no idea because yeah. they're just so young. It's so it's fun to be mm -hmm. on a trip and then to kind of like they're trying tricks and you're like, oh yeah, like Gary came up with that or like I came up with that and they're like, no, you didn't. And I'm like here's the video, you know, like yeah, like literally I invented. That. And so I think it is motivating. <laughs> yeah. yeah, literally, and uh, and I think it's motivating for them and it's fun and we just like you know you just talk shit to each other all day and you just hang out and I think that's it's fun. So I don't know what the future holds in BMX, but like. I feel like I'm getting or I've been in a happier place. I think I was in the happiest place when I was younger. And then there was a moment in the middle where I was just kind of like, dude, what's happening? Like, when, what's like next? Like you even said, in your yeah. career feeling. Yeah. And like, and I know that's coming, but now I feel better about that. And like, also feel better that like, it doesn't have to come. I just keep riding bikes and like the. Keep having fun and keep exactly. working hard when you're in the van. Yeah. And it's like. 
and getting clips and like motivating these guys and like having fun or putting them in position or like helping Brett. Like Brett's a good example of someone that like I've been riding with him for a few years now and like seeing him go through like finding like figuring out who is who he is as a rider and then like the last year like figuring out who he wants to be as a rider like putting you know his priorities in in a certain order and like now seeing what he's done with it and like getting all these opportunities and seeing the clips he's filming like dude's on fire and it's fun to be a part of that and just to like be an example that like yeah you don't have to go and like drink you don't have to go and do this not that i'm like this big advocate of like yeah. don't drink or don't i mean like i think you should all everyone should smoke weed it's good for you like i'm not like this telling people that you're doing something wrong yeah i think some things aren't for everyone and like you have to learn how to navigate those things and everyone navigates everything differently and like brett i think has found like his happy place and like dude has all the energy in the world and is like killing it and i think that's like cool and i think to be able to watch that and be a part of that is awesome hell yeah yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. it's motivating watch watching aaron ride like being your age and going on trips with gary and stuff i'm like I don't know. I'm like, I want to be like that. Like, yeah. it looks like like longevity, and like he's still working hard, like beating his ass, like, and, and like literally and, and like getting dudes up. with so much shit going on back home, you know, and yeah, and they've done this shit for 20 years, and they still have the love for it. You're like, all right, yeah, yeah, I love seeing it. Like, I'm just like, man, that's hard work. Like, you're you're earning that. I love it. Yeah, even Gary, like now now having a kid and like seeing Gary with the kids and how he did that way earlier than we than i did it but like and gary was like pat casey probably huh he had kids really young no not super young not that like 20, young. No, i mean she's uh, probably eight now yeah uh gary's 37 26 okay, so it's yeah 26 okay yeah. so yeah. i think like seeing gary do it and be like oh you could do that and you can i do think obviously we're in different spots and different age stuff and like my wife's work is so busy right now that like it is harder at this point than it was like if my work was busier like it was 10 yeah. years ago or eight years ago my work was important to continue and now it's we're just in a different spot but i think that's good and perfect for me to have the kid because i can still have the enjoyment of this and going on these trips but not have that like full schedule of a year yeah you're Even not go, you're not going to go to thailand for two weeks exactly and, yeah. but i'm still excited that like i'm on a perfect amount of the i have the perfect amount of sponsors to still go on four or five trips a year and mm-hmm. like still be present at home enough when like at one point in the busy years i was gone like you know 80 90 percent of the year it's just like if it wasn't a real trip it would be like a journey's backyard barbecue or like i did those hot wheels behind the scenes like talking things where i'd go on these crazy trips and like do these youtube videos for hot wheels let's start let's talk about kind of the random stuff yes because so there's there's hanging out with mario andretti right Mm -hmm. that's the guy that's the guy okay that's the guy the fast guy the fast guy the fastest guy knocked your drink over um so how does You've had some, I think, just your outward, you know, uh, extroverted self has and and social media presence and all that stuff has has produced some interesting adventures over yes. the years. Yes. I assume Hot Wheels was the most lucrative of them, but what was there? Was there some other ones as well? Like, I mean, I just remember like obviously like the lambo situation yeah. is like oh hey aaron yeah well, let's just just take this lambo for yeah. a couple i don't of know days. why they gave me the lambo yeah you it know was awesome. like like so <laughs> i think dugan got more out of that than me in the end yes that video did. keeps going viral oh, yeah, he jumped, he jumped yeah. it right? jumped yeah. it. read it right was yeah. that the yeah. same was that the same kicker that he still brings yeah. around still has it everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That thing's crazy. um yeah the hot wheels thing was cool i mean that a lot of the stuff because i've never had an agent i've always well not always but at one point i wanted an agent because like, i thought i had once the cat so bad it won't, and aaron doesn't want to touch her once um, once. Uh, I, i've never <laughs> <laughs> i've never had an agent i wanted one for a minute because yeah. i had the i knew i had the followers and the stuff to do something with it but it just never felt right and everyone you would talk to they were like well you know i just like I, I don't know how to do this i just love doing this on my own and a lot of those crazy opportunities came from good friends like Bauer's the one who knew someone at Hot Wheels and like put me in the position to mm-hmm. be there and then I you know ran with it I I kind of gotten the opportunity to do a couple like uh, microphone stuff for X Games and I wasn't good at it like I'm very bad I'm very good at like sitting down and doing this or like I could host a show but I'm not good at the, like on the fly like go back and forth with someone yeah. in a different booth like it terrifies me i'm like scared which is so weird because like you wouldn't think that i'm that scared it's but daunting, i'm like sitting yeah. there and they're like send us back and i was you're like, like natural with talking instead of like the scripted like ask him this I you're struggle. like i don't ask him that you i know? struggle <laughs> with the talking well, so you you know i did a little broadcast stuff with x games like 
two years ago mm-hmm. or a year ago. So I was in the booth with Scotty. I wasn't talking, but it was like seeing that the scene hit Scotty and the other guy, like, and how they operate and, and just like the, you know, like, all right, we get to this segment, you have to throw it to this and then you have to, you know, you have to present it by, and then they would scratch it and they have like 10 seconds, 15 seconds to redo it and stuff yeah. like that. And like, that's, hard. I would be like, I would literally be like, bitch like just it just come out or something <laughs> I, you know never... like like something it's 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 very like i consider myself decent at talking but that is it's hard level, level, and to like, like i just like the I, I feel like i start to stutter or like go silent and be like we're going back to you guys and like yeah. i'm like back Sticking to who like, and thinking like, too much what you're saying yes yeah. and getting ahead or getting you know getting wrapped up in the sentence before you even get to yeah. it and just stuff like that scripted that's scripted it's, it's hard. Yeah, when you like, when you don't when acting. you're saying totally. when you're saying somebody's else's writing totally it's really hard it's you, acting you're reading point. something we just did this the other really day hard. we did that that bob ross thing for empire mm-hmm. and Devin wrote out a line and we were there for two hours and like i think him and adam and i all wanted to kill each other because he was like just read it and i'm like Devin, i don't talk like bob ross like it doesn't <laughs> want to come out like that yeah. yeah and it was hard but and it's like that's i was reading six lines and it took us two hours and yeah. like, we were yeah. yelling at each other it was, I mean, it was brutal yeah and so yeah it's the scripted stuff that's hard if i could sit down and like do what you guys are doing or like like running like you know i always said oh i can do the the tonight show but i couldn't do the like live thing yeah i also think i you said you had your own podcast for a little yeah, bit too and that was fun like i yeah. loved it and like she would do the intro and i could do the intro and it was like that was easy because you could just start over i think it's the live stuff that freaks me out i think that's really hard on me yeah. um i think like i just feel like you get wrapped up in it you just get mm-hmm. lost and it's hard so so what that's what, not your future then no you know. not at all <laughs> what like non-endemic no, like what like sorry big big word big word, big word sorry uh non-bmx company sponsors have you had like like so obviously etnies uh hot wheels has there been some other ones or is that etnies a, etnies non-BMX? A BMX? i mean they're not they're they're a giant shoe company yeah, they started with bmx yeah. so yeah. Um, i mean fox, fox uh yeah. Um, Hot chronic, Wheels, chronic energy. Chronic energy. You were from, on Chronic yeah, Energy for wow. like a year. Maybe. Me and Lino, Lino Gonzalez, going nice. to uh, Arizona. That's sick. how crazy is that? That's yeah. really cool. We were both getting money. Was that the same era, like Sexton and? Yeah. Well, yeah. Sexton came a little bit after because yeah. he lived in AZ, and so like we were on for a year. I think we got like. 200 and 400 bucks a month, and we got drinks, and it was like, and that was it. It was over, and then Sexton was on it for like maybe that year and the next year like a different era because by the time he got to austin he was like still kind of had stickers on his bike and mm-hmm. maybe getting some money um i was sponsored by body glove surge which was like this energy shot and it was probably the best sponsor i ever had like not, they paid really well but it was like they never got their shit together mm-hmm. and so they never gave me anything i got this the product but they never gave me anything to do they never we never did anything free money and so those funny, are the best corporate sponsors. The best. <laughs> You're like, why so, did you just sponsor like, me for the year? Well, at first, I was like nervous because I'm like, you know, I feel that that this isn't a this, that was close to selling out. But I was like, it was good money. Let's do this, whatever. And then nothing ever happened. And so funny story. I got a two year contract. The first year, I think I got like a thousand bucks, and the second year, I got twelve hundred bucks. And I never talked about the second year because I didn't want them to think about it. And so I just got a thousand bucks for two years in a row and never brought it up. And like the end of the second year, they're like, yeah, we didn't really do anything. I'm like, it's all good. And like, we just, the phone call just hung up and I was like, <laughs> I made two years of money. Didn't ask for the raise. Cause I thought it would like ruffle the feathers. And I was like, we're just going to do this. Like no stickers, nothing. And so, yeah, I mean, I, you feel a little guilty, but that's their fault. Like they should come and yeah, get, I mean, come and get what you, you're, yeah. yeah, that's not my fault. No, it's some, so, somebody dropped the ball on their end. Yeah. And know, I just like took, I just definitely... quietly took the money and the check, I, every month I think it's still, the check's still coming. Like there's and, a couple, I mean, there's a couple of stories like that over the years. Yeah. I would definitely like, I've been writing for this company for six years and yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. 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 So, um, other than that, I don't know. I, mean, yeah. I think like the flick trick stuff was cool. Yeah, yeah. that's what it was. The, the the finger bikes. Yeah, yeah. So I, you were all. I mean, Bauer was in for that, right? Yeah. Well, like, I think they hit up maybe because they were down the street from Bauer or mm. from Odyssey or something. So like, but they were doing. They were getting everyone involved, and the guy was still. Good. They're still around. They're still at yeah, Target. They still have. I find yeah. Sunday ones at Target. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all of them. I have one in my room. Yeah. Yep. They, uh, the action figure was the cool part yeah. because the bike was cool and it was cool because mine were so detailed. They looked just like my bike because my bikes were so wild and we would copy them yeah. exactly. Walter other... has one still. Yeah. I saw it in his garage a while back and I was like, what? Yeah, because he, <laughs> shoot, he, shot, he, he shot a bunch of the photos that we would use for it. Um, but the action figure was the thing. Like, There was a few things in my like career that like put me over the like 
for my dad or for someone. And one of them was Mario Andretti. My dad growing up being a car guy. And it was to him, it was like, you jumped out of a plane with Mario Andretti? Why? And I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, it's like that was like all the, the, the Nora Cup or the winning of the parts. Like he appreciated it. He knows. He's, yeah, he's in it. Yeah. But that was like you made it to Mario Andretti, which was like his childhood hero of being a car guy. And the same for the action figure was like, you can go into Target and Walmart and all these places and buy this. And yeah. like that one was the one that hit me. And I was like, damn, I have an action figure. That's crazy. That's like, and even though we didn't get paid a lot for him or anything, it was still like extra money. But I think like that memory on that action figure I'll have for my whole life and like the money I would have, you know, would be gone by this yeah, point. Yeah. Or it doesn't matter. So like the, it, I remember going in and be like, well, my bikes are pretty specific and my bikes are selling well. Should you give me more money? And in my head, I was like, you can give me no you money. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm Don't gonna, ruin this. I'm going to do this for free, <laughs> but more money would be great. And, I, and they did give me more money. And he'd be like, you're getting the most out of anyone. I'm like, I think Mira has one. So I yeah. know I'm not getting the uh, most yeah. money out of it. Yeah. Who all had one that was an action figure, you know? Um, I, uh, I don't know. I, wasn't, uh, I don't remember yeah. all the action figures. There wasn't very many guys with the action figure. Yeah. But yeah. I feel like I had a Nyquist one. Well, Nyquist, Nyquist had, had one, had one but, but it looked think, nothing like him. But I don't think he had one when I had it. He had one from the one before. Mm. Yeah. But there was a few. I think maybe Hoffman got an action figure. Yeah. I mean, he's probably had a few, obviously. Yeah. So anyways, that was the cool. That moment was like, oh, you kind of did something that's bigger or outside or bigger in the mainstream yeah. world. Like not, I mean, getting an action figure was like, I mean. I don't know. I, I have a That's bunch a, of them. I always consider Crazy. that, like, I always joke that it's, like, stuff you'll tell your grandkids, yeah. you know? Like, yeah, I'm I'm old and stupid now, but one time they made an action figure <laughs> well, that's out the of thing. me and sold uh, it like, at a store. You'll have these conversations. It's like, what do you do? Yeah. I'm like, what do you do? I'm like, I don't I just ride bikes and, like, film promos. It's hard to explain to someone sometimes. And, like, it's a little different. Like, your situation, like... You, you've won contests and you go to big contests. So like you can say, Oh, I'm a contest writer or not that you want to tell people you're a contest writer, but like that is a good way. I'm a to, podcaster. I'm a podcaster. That's, like, what, he, that's what he tells. BMX that's what he tells like, people now. Like, yeah, exactly. Know, and I, uh -huh. I can say yes, yeah, but I always have to say like, Oh, back in the day, whatever. But like the action figures, like, Oh, I once had, an, like, Oh, oh, not that I'm going around telling yeah. people this, but it's like the legitimizes your situation yeah. when like, it's a hard situation to understand. And so, so you literally go around and tell people you're an action. Yeah. I tell them all. I just I just keep it in my you're car. Right you like get pulled get pulled over by a cop and you're like, I you just see your license. You just put the action figure yeah. right there. Confused. So, yeah. As soon as someone's confused with BMX, you're like, I have an action figure. I have an action figure. What the yeah. fuck does that mean? BMX action figure. I don't know what the hell you do. Um, so, how long, how long do the Hot Wheels things last? Two years. Two years. Yeah, I, and it was a. The, the lady that helped do it was a lady named Rebecca, and she was like, uh, "Shout out to Rebecca! Shout out to Rebecca!" And I think it would have lasted for a long time, <laughs> mm -hmm. but she ended up taking over like I don't know what position, but she went to China and like ran Hot Wheels. Yeah, and she was like, "I'm not there anymore." And she was like, "I'm gonna get you to China, and we're gonna do some stuff." And it just never really happened. Yeah. But like, I think if she never got promoted, I, mean, I say her. that all the time. It's all it's all somebody that's in there, and then the next person and comes like, in and goes, ah, scratch this, scratch like, this, even, I'm gonna do this, to, even totally. just for no reason, just to look like they've been doing. Something, even this, day, like, so. Bethany's favorite movie is Back to the Future, and they always make these crazy DeLorean things. And mm -hmm. like, I hit up Rebecca, and I was like, hey, what's up? Like, can I get some of those DeLorean things? They're hard to find. And she was like, yeah. And they just like send us. So I still have an in, but just mm -hmm. like the money in is not there. But she was awesome, and like. At the end of the day, all that money stuff is needed and like appreciated, but like the memories and all these like meeting Danica Patrick and jumping out of a plane with Mario Andretti, like that stuff, like I'll never forget that. The photos from that, That's amazing. Loop, that loop, the thing loop thing, yeah. yeah, stuff like that, yeah. like getting the like, no one else, like I'm not the best person that should have rode that loop, but I was the only person that got to ride the loop. Yeah. Like there was you went in the car when they did that loop. No, 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 no. they he let me like, ride it he... outside of it at yeah. X Games, and like I just pedaled as fast as I could and like went as high oh, as I could. Yeah, I did yeah. like a tail whip and like a tuck, you know, just tucked and like Devin shot photos, and it was like. Everyone's like, why didn't you, where's the video? I'm like, we were, we did this for three minutes. Yeah. Like yeah. I was so tired because I think I only took three or four runs and I would literally, they were like, you better hurry. And I'd go to the end and just take off pedaling again <sighs> because that's how much time we yeah. had. Yeah. And like, imagine if someone could have been like, okay, let's plan this out. Let's get 30 minutes at this thing. You could have, you know, got but, towed in. Exactly. Like anything. It would have been great. The loop. I'm just pedaling as fast as I can, like up this thing. And, and it was huge. It was so, like, so big. You max out. You probably, you're like, fuck, I want to get way yeah. up there. <laughs> and, but I'm also scared. So like yeah. you would have been a better person person to do it because like you ride you ride transition i don't and so it was definitely like this you need this, to warm up to it yeah like yeah. i'm like i could go higher but i'm terrified <laughs> kind of like the thing you were talking about like getting loose coming down like it has like a metal bar on the side it's only like 10 feet wide or something like if you get any loose i mean it's gnarly yeah even though it's chill it's like you want to ease up to it mm -hmm. i didn't want to just let whatever yeah. it was fun so, yeah. so sorry hot wheels uh i 
am now bleeding at the bottom of your loop thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I'm in the way. In 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, that was that one was cool. So that's cool. Yeah, what uh, cool stuff. I think I think you had a quote about BMX not being a job, but being a job. Like you treat it as a job. Like it, it's, so, when you're you're doing something for Hot Wheels, mm-hmm. it's like like I'm taking this serious. I am going to do the best I can so Rebecca loves me and will continue to pay me, et cetera, and I get to, you know, pay me slash uh, get to go on the next adventure. Yeah, yeah. So does that translate into stuff with Odyssey, like checking these boxes totally. and, and stuff like that? Like how do you how do you treat uh, being a professional, I guess? Because um, I feel like this is something that a lot, of, a lot of people potentially listening are like, hey, I want to be a pro bike rider one day. You're giving – Brett gets to witness it fairly often. Especially but from how the do you... dude. I feel like Aaron – Yeah, I've said a few times in this podcast, but from just being straight up core street rider, you know, that's yeah. like the hardest way in BMX to make a good living and especially buy rental houses and yeah, start yeah. businesses. Yeah. Like if anyone knows how to do it, he's doing it because yeah. he's at the end of BMX because like – contest riding the corporate side of riding that's a little bit easier when you're in that sense but just a core street rider you can get a few sponsors but like you really did it that is yeah yeah. it's the hardest way to make the it's just it just it is interesting how like when you go to like if me shooting photos at x games if i go to if i go to x games and it's like you know there's garrett there's chad there's all this stuff but if i'm shooting photos at x games the money to be made unfortunately is not off of the street dudes it's super weird that like the park dudes and all and the big air dudes and all that stuff have the 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 more wide-ranging sponsors where it's like so it's just and if and if and if i'm making more money off of those riders then those riders are also making more money you know so it's just such a weird uh, you know aspect because in my head street riding is the most popular yeah aspect of bmx and it's like i think for me you asked the least corporate yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. And it's funny because to me it's the most like it's the most relatable, but at the same time I think it's the thing that like no one everyone wants to see someone do a backflip. Everyone wants to see someone jump mega ramp because they're a bit larger than life. Mm-hmm. And I think it's 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 it, it's hard to Dog understand bark. why because I feel like the street it's like street riding's like, you know, you're Brett, go handle your dog. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> He's probably just working um, as a mailman. Or something. But you asked about like the if that you know goes over to like Odyssey or something. Yeah, just how um, you how you are a professional, actual professional. I think yes. I mean, I thought like I just I, I don't know if I've ever in the fifteen years I I think I've never said no to anything. I've never said no to a trip. I've maybe tried to rework it to like something that fit the my personality or something better. But like I think in all I guess sixteen years, I think. No joke, I've missed maybe three trips ever. Crazy. Like, hurt or not, I go on the trip and I like, I, if I can't ride, I go. If I can ride, I'll, I I think that's also, you know, that's backfired some. I'm in bad shape, like mm. my ankles and everything. But like, well, I've, you said that story before, I think even before Dennis got here, was that you went on an Etnies trip, broke your foot the first day, yeah. stayed, kept riding for 10 days and like 10 rode, days and then broke, broke my your ankle, ankle, the, the yeah, other like, ankle. And I don't think of myself as like this tough and everybody guy. Everybody was like, shut think, up, shut up, Aaron. Yeah. Your foot's not broken. And then you show them the x-rays yeah. and both feet were broken. Yeah. I think like, I don't think of myself as overly tough guy. I don't think, I just think that like, I respect that you're giving me the opportunity and I don't want to say no. And I remember hearing stories and I won't get into names of people. Name. No. Names. But like someone was like, it's my birthday. I'm not coming on the trip. And I'm like, what? It's Chase. It's not Chase. Chase. It wasn't Chase. <laughs> but like, and I was just like, what? Like I've, i like, I mean, look, I didn't miss it on purpose, but like my parents understood it. And I think yeah. my parents, the work ethic, like I went to Germany on an Etnies trip. Work this ethic is, is the right word. I feel like yeah. for you and your company, and just like, show up. My dad just always was like, if you have a kid, you show up. If you have a job, you show up. That's mm-hmm. it. And like, if, when, if, and when you have a child, you show up, that's it. You'd be there for everything. And as long as you're there for everything, you're there for everything. Mm-hmm. That was it. And it was like, seems so simple. I think for BMX, it was like, I, I'm not like in all these years, through all the injuries, unless it was like the surgery where I like actually had surgery, I've never missed, I've missed two trips, like mm-hmm. two or three trips my whole entire life. Like I've never, I've said yes to every one of them, never missed them. And that's some of those trips I'm like hurt. And I just was like power earthing through or like, because I like, I appreciate the opportunity. You never know when the last one's going to be. And so I didn't want the miss to be the last one. I wanted to be like there for it. 
I think Gary has a same. I think Gary can s- essentially say the same thing. Oddly enough, like I just feel like it's a, he almost has the same exact yeah. work ethic where it's like, For yeah, sure. if I get to invite on a trip, that's my job. Totally, I've been yeah. not working. I've been going to the park and riding. Totally, and that's not my work. The and work I think is it, that trip. You know, Gary's had a couple bigger injuries, like longer injuries yeah. than I've had. Like obviously, we've all been hurt, and I, I've definitely missed trips or the trips were scheduled yeah, of around. But I'm saying like some of those trips were moved so that I could be better in six weeks and I'd go. Um, and I, I, I don't think like I, I don't, and it's also like, I would not want to miss them. It wasn't like I was like, felt like it was work. It was just like, I guess some of that like FOMO of like, I don't want to miss out on something that could happen. And also just the respect I had for like the sponsors, the people there giving me a chance, even as I was older, I still felt like I'm still like, I'm going on trips with kids like, ah, I've got some stuff to do. And I'm just like, dude, this is what you got to do. Like, yeah. This is the memories. Yeah. Like you're never going to get these back. And like, I don't know. That's how I felt. So yeah. Oh, you, yeah, you, yeah. Had a, you had a quote in the in the I think it was a dig interview, maybe a Ride UK interview or something that basically said that, that it you know you have you get these dudes that come on and they they feel like they made it mm-hmm. and they got their two years and then they get a little lazy and they don't want to you know they don't want to put the work in that that is what got them to that point and then they're out they're yeah. gone in a year or two and it's like yeah well like, not that I thought about this all these years ago but you hear these quotes or you watch that like Michael Jordan documentary and they're like Michael Jordan was the first one to the not that I'm Michael Jordan I don't think of myself Michael Jordan but he was the first one to the <laughs> gym and the last one to leave and you're like he's the greatest basketball player of all time and then there's like a reason for that yeah. like, yes you know like you put in work like no. I mean you go out and ride and you get your body ready you ride your ramp you stay ready for whatever you want to do like whatever you want to attack that weekend and you stay ready and like I think that's like, I don't know, that's a good way to go about anything. Like, just stay ready for it all. And like, don't get me wrong. There's been times I've been lazy. There's been times I don't ride. And like, but. But when as, you get that call to go on the trip, yeah, you're like, let's do I get it. ready. It's my and sponsor. I go. Yeah, exactly. It's really cool. Sunday and Odyssey have you and Gary. And I feel like, you know, you're a little bit different ages, but you both have that same work ethic. And like, yeah. I love that. It's like, and Gary's, I mean, obviously someone like Gary's been someone fun to watch or look up to because he is. He's like a little lead, bit older than you, yeah, right? He's leading the way and like the dad stuff and like the like work and like doing something just like doing it i think like i I don't know i just always had this appreciation for like getting to do this job and like understanding that yeah it's definitely going to end one day Mm. that doesn't mean i'm ever going to stop riding that doesn't mean that like my friends we won't go on a trip like across texas or across whatever or or you won't be involved with the brands in some capacity as well like just because it's like not your main focus like doesn't mean you can't go on a trip a couple times a year and i've said that to sunday and odyssey forever i'm like yeah "Yeah, one day i just want to go on the trip and like do the behind the scenes and like talk yeah. with like talk talk to these guys or whatever and like I think that stuff's fun. That'd Just be cool. More, there needs yeah. to be more like understanding of what goes down and yeah. like shown like I think behind the scenes of a trip it's always just the riding skateboarding <laughs> has been able to do that yeah they there's so much that. more i mean obviously at the end there's so much more money and so mm-hmm. like they can hang on to dudes and like a, like they can show dudes the love for years and years and mm-hmm. years and bmx is getting there if you really like it look is. at some of the guys that have like mm-hmm. been able to stay around for a lot longer 30 is a new 20 I exactly like, yeah and like dudes mm-hmm. are getting to have that opportunity to hang around mm-hmm. and like be there and like get us stay involved and like you have multi-generational like kids writing and like understanding that like biz is still doing biz stuff and like that's rad like mm-hmm. and rooftop is still doing rooftop stuff and yeah and like uh i don't know i just think it's cool i and I, I was gonna say this earlier i don't know but i think we our age and like he's younger but like I think us and you have we're living. How in old like are you? Sorry, thirty four. Thirty four. You're thirty five in August. Yeah, you're really yeah. young still. I think we're. You've been living, just pro since you're like sixteen, so it yeah, seems it's like it's been a long time. Yeah. I think we are living in the like the golden age of BMX. We got a taste of like the original Road Fools. Mm-hmm. We got like the like beginning of social media and like when video parts meant the world, like DVDs meant the world, yeah. and then now it's like we're just getting. We've seen all these things, and like you still ha- you still understand the value of the video part and like you get to put that out and you're putting work in it it's appreciated but there's some kids that like don't know that and yeah. like they've maybe been pro for three years and never had a video part like they they're and that's crazy to think like they're pro and they don't have a video part when like if i got done with this thing and didn't have a video part i'd be like what do i have you yeah. know like, like yeah. I said, what I, do you hold I have on an to action figure what legit on to what, <laughs> what legit company do you think that has a dude on their team that's pro that hasn't had a video part no, I just think there's more kids that are. Got a, there's there's definitely a no. I, I know there, there is. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's a good yeah. point. And I'm just like, yeah. but thinking about it, it's like, I don't know any. I mean, I think so, yeah. Well, yeah. I think there's different. There's might be kids that have yeah. parts, but they don't have like the put in work for two years video part because that's been lost. True. I believe. That I think is, it's more yeah, of like trip edit two yeah, trips two or months. And, and that's not hating. I understand the value in that. Also, it's just like we understand the value in like 
the like the big projects or the big things and i think that's like and you, and those are what you remember criminal mischief do you remember these big and like, you remember like, making those parts totally. that take two years that's some of my best memories in life is like those yep. two-year missions with your friends totally. to all finish a part together and it's like two years just goes by like that it's crazy but i think that insta gratification and the social media makes kids like they just have to put their hammer clips out right now and it's like which I do understand it's, it, because you see it's, it and you see the like interaction they get and you're like, oh, I get it. But I just, that's, I got that interaction also, but I was still doing stuff behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And so now I just think the, I think the job title has changed. And I think like there's some people that are expect, like, I feel like a Brett is, ex is like, I don't want to say expected, but like he understands the value of the video part. So he's putting work into that. And there's like a crew of guys in Austin, like, the bunch of the Sunday dudes, Julian and those guys are yeah. putting that work in for the bigger thing. Yeah. But they also understand the value of your job and like you put your clips out, but put Gosh. the fun ones out. Like exactly. put the steezy, like yeah. Brett's really good at being like pop, pop this. And it's like, that's Instagram, but like the real clip goes and gets yep. saved. And um, I feel like Brock did a really good job on his podcast of talking about that. Cause he's kind of like you and Gary were just strong work ethic. And he's like, you know, you're working on your part, but you also let people know you're riding, shout your sponsors totally. out in between. Like he even went through like ACL surgery or something yep. and had enough clips in his phone and it looked like he was riding every was day, crazy. Like, which is kind of crazy, but yeah. it's still like, fuck man, that's amazing. Yeah. Like he is very focused and smart yep. about it. And I think now to be a pro rider, you kind of yeah. have mean, to understand your filters with everything. Cause you'll, there's some kids who blow themselves up on Instagram. They get sponsored, put out a part and everyone's just like, Oh, so you were, those were your bangers on Instagram. Yeah, and yeah, they, totally. kinda, poof, they drop back down. Like, I think like, it's tough when you have like, you have all these guys that like they're so good and like they like they i think kids don't realize what goes into some of this stuff like they don't understand like the stuff you go through with your body or like chase with his like rehabbing his shoulders and all the work he does and like obviously like he, you put hints of that stuff out but i think people don't realize how hard some of this stuff is to like put out a real video part within a year or within a year and a half and like sometimes you can get real lucky and sometimes it feels like totally i can't film a fucking clip in three months what's yeah. wrong with me i don't like, know if i yeah i mean I'm, I'm in that right now like i got some clips on this trip but the last two big things i've tried saying to do bangers yeah the, the yeah. last few i trust brett more on this the yeah. last few things i've tried to get i got and then like slipped a pedal like riding away and like stuff mm. like that and then like started raining and i'm like didn't get his i'm just like it feels so, like that sometimes so yeah. then you start it's to feel like, like everything's like, against you two of them in a row that were good and big but they're like i didn't even get them but i have a clip to show you mm -hmm. but i like it's not it and so you're just it's not like, what you want oh gosh like yeah or like one of them i like tried to hop up off the curb leaving didn't need it it's <laughs> unnecessary hey that's sick though but it has like this weird whip. roll <laughs> And I just like slipped a pedal and it started raining. And like now I have this clip that's like unusable because I try to do hop whip. And I'm I like, I don't think that's unusable because no, everyone I'm, knows you can hop whip so easy. Yeah, it's I'm going to go funny. back and do it. But like, if you would have laughed, if you would have laughed afterwards, it would have been. I should have laughed. Yeah. Daryl, Daryl, yeah. Daryl was feeling it. Daryl yeah. laughed. Yeah. Daryl loved it. He was like, oh, <laughs> like, yeah, I got it. It's hard, man. We, we have a good crew in Austin right now, too, because Devin Hutchins is in a spot to get out and film and shoot photos again. Yeah, and you like, guys got Devin yeah, what's back. Devin, what's Devin doing? He's got a snow cone stand, man. He's okay, got a that was stand. not what I expected. <laughs> That's he, really good. Oh, you you, you, were, <laughs> I mean, you were expecting even, you were, even during like winter apocalypse. Right? <laughs> it's it's closed in the winter. winter. Yeah, it's closed in the winter. Just right. opened back up. It's like now. a Hawaiian ice, so it's like real ice, ice with like all real ingredients. It's good. Him and the guy Colt that uh, owns Shakespeare's and a bunch of oh, the bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They started this thing together, and Devin's you know half owner and like. What did you think I was thinking, Dennis? I, I know what I know what you thought. I know what he did. He doesn't live out here anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't but don't lump san diego in with that so, so he, devin was shooting bizarre photos of naked people i know what devin was doing <laughs> <laughs> so he so anyways but i think that the opportunity when it got to winter it closed and so he was like i want to do bmx stuff and so tina and tom let him take over some stuff and like that's awesome so we've been working on a project with chase tom and i and that's been fun because we're with I'm with Daryl, Devin, Chase, Tom. We're all the older I guys. Yeah, it's almost an old. We have, yeah, we have all these like Brett's been hanging out with us a lot, but some of the who's, younger, who's, get, you know, he's an old soul. He's an old soul, and he's like motivated to get out there. And not that the other dudes aren't. It's just scheduling stuff with some of those other guys. They'll ride from like three to midnight, yeah. and we're getting out at like ten or eleven. The dads are getting out yeah, early. Yeah. Try to hit both, and so yeah. he's good at getting both <laughs> sessions in. But it's been fun to go out and get close with Daryl. We get one clip, and we're like, all right. 
See that's ya. it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been fun. And Daryl's working on a burn slow project and like Devin's kind of doing both. And so cool. it's been, it's been fun. So. That's, that's one thing we haven't touched on is it burn slow. Yep. So burn slow, you are a part owner of that. Correct. I am. And yeah. Oh yeah. Who are the, no, who are the that. other owners? Um, Adam Roy. How much, well, how, and how much did you pay Corey Nastasio for his plug on the podcast? Dude, he loved it. Yeah. I don't know. We didn't pay him anything. <laughs> um, asked, he loves what he loves. He yeah, dude. He is psyched. He wasn't wearing a rock star hat, but repped burn slow. <laughs> he wasn't? No. Oh my gosh. He, it was funny though, because <laughs> my, our favorite part. I think he might've thought he was off rock star that week. Yeah, <laughs> I think, he, I think he did. I think he did. So. <laughs> Um, it's me, Chase, Beep and Beep, uh, uh, Devin, mm-hmm. and Adam. And okay. Adam is the majority, and he yeah. handles it all. And it's all you know. It's his company. We all have some input in like vibes and input in like direction and like. But it's his company. He goes through everything. He's hold, he's holding it down. We go on. We've we've all gone in and helped packed orders and stuff. And like right after a big release, stuff will kind of pop off for a little bit. So we all go in there and help. And I think the the main motivation behind this was like one, it was time for us to do our own thing as mm-hmm. a whole, and it's also like we've all kind of come full circle in sponsors, and we don't get to go on trips together. So like none of you guys have clothing sponsors. Yeah, either, right? and so we all kind of were like, how do we go on trips together? Like Adam and Devin, like these are the OG mm-hmm. homies. Like how do we go on a trip together? And I was like, well, if we do this, we can do whatever we want, and we can go on trips. Like we went on one trip, then COVID hit, so we just haven't really got out there. But that's the plan is to like always bring someone, um, no team right now, but like these dudes are getting paid. Like we're paying these guys to that's film awesome. videos. Like, okay. um, Adam wanted to do a company the, the way that so you guys he, have a full on like pro team. No, but no, but no, but, but yes, yes, but no, <laughs> we don't want, as of right now, we don't have a team, but we are paying dudes to do projects and like work on stuff like promo uh, videos for cool. us. Um, we didn't want to like get in, you know, and this is at more of Adam's area but like we want it to be people that are also down and so like you know brett's down so like brett gets like we're buying brett lights to like go and light up spots and like do it we want to support dudes we really enjoy to do stuff Mm -hmm. and like i think that's amazing so giving back like and he also has like a sick way of doing it for sure and he's gotten he's gotten a a good amount of money and he's it's all you know for him it's like bonus but he's also gone in there like i'm sorry we aren't done he's like that's all good we're just like you're down we're down and we want you to know we're down and um and maybe one day we'll have a team but like right now it's like you know you you've owned a company it's hard to like go straight into that and like fund all this so we're trying to like fund it in the way that makes the most sense Mm -hmm. and adam's trying to do it in the most like not asking anyone for favors he wants to pay everyone like what they're worth and so that's been tough because like i don't know tough but like you're getting you would like to work with this guy for this or that but he's expensive and adam doesn't want to like ask him to do it for a discount yeah i go through the same thing because i don't want to ask people i know what the value of certain things are and i wouldn't i wouldn't be psyched if somebody asks me to do something for free yes because i can't yep and then so i i don't like to ask and so adam's done a good job being like this is who we can afford and so this is what we're going to do right now and that's great and yeah. so we've we're going we're growing and growing so like the next time we get to go through that we can ask someone that has this or that like maybe someone more expensive and like not that we're gonna go get it maybe we'll, we'll pay someone more you know pay someone else <laughs> i don't think we can beat out vans yeah. but my point is like he's we're head try- to toe he's head to toe head to toe yeah um we try to like neck, you, neck to toe neck to toe Rock we want to try <laughs> to you know hook up the people that are like down that's it and like yeah. we want it to be family so we want it to be people that are having fun riding bikes so that's so, the best like bmxers who have like you your whole you chase everyone involved in that has been like basically bmx has been their career and mm-hmm. their their love and now you get to have someone like brett and funnel money back into him and do something yeah. cool it's like and support, more people so, need to be doing that yeah I and i think it. that's the cool part right now is we like we are lucky to be doing we did the first year did really well and that's so awesome. we like you know we're on the good side of everything and like we got through covid with like out anything bad and like people see real too like yeah. bmx is yeah. running bmx and doing totally. what you're doing funding people to make cool projects that they're hyped on it people see that it's yeah. like very obvious and, and people are going to support that totally and i think like people have supported adam for all these years mm-hmm. from empire to cult to now and like all the weird all the i don't say weird all the wild and weird he has an amazing and creative direction exactly yeah. Yeah. and so he's doing. people respect that and understand he's doing it and like i think people like maybe people have waited for chase or i or like devin to do something and so like people are psyched like people are psyched that chase has something he's supporting and like and adam's doing a good job being like this is more for this person and this is more for the aaron vibe and this is so like we're kind of hitting you guys are all different exactly and we're like hitting all the marks of like i would not wear this but like these dudes were so like 
and like you know stuff like that where like Brett will wear some stuff I wouldn't wear and like that makes it to where everyone's psyched and like you're gonna get you know it gets it makes it easier on the buyer also because not everyone wants to buy this or that yeah. so it's been fun a dad cap or something yeah. yeah what uh where does the name come from um it Branson kinda, come on dude it kind of <laughs> just came I think it was uh it, it really wasn't we didn't really know but yeah. Adam, Adam was kind of like I think it's just the world's burning slow and yeah. so we're just like that's it we're just all burning slow cool was that it like. Yeah. I don't know if there's like a deeper meaning, but that's the one I got. So yeah. I don't know if it changes. But is there is there a goal? Like I think I remember hearing something like, "Oh, you guys kind of wanted to make it like uh, you know a little more mainstream, not necessarily like a strict BMX brand." Yeah, I think we just want to support everyone. We have a bunch of friends that are skaters, and like one of my best friends is like works in fashion, and like he, he does a lot of surfing and like a good skateboard. We want to support that. We mm -hmm. want to like support that like go out there and like be creative lifestyle and like obviously we all know bmxers so the core of it is going to always be bmx but like we're I, we want to make uh like surf short or not surf shorts like board shorts this summer mm -hmm. and like or whatever and like have a surf video and like be like we do whatever like that's an amazing way yeah. to do yeah. it because then you then it'll hopefully which i feel like with this outlook and the the people you have behind it it'll grow and grow yeah, and grow yeah. and that'll have this like it'll be like an etnies or something for bmx but it'll have totally. like bmx at the heart which set, not all these big companies, like it's pretty rare to have BMX at the heart. It's always like they grab on to BMX totally. when, they, when they have enough cash to be like, we want BMX a part of it. Yeah, and like, this is always going to be a BMX. I mean, you're never sure. going to take you out. You guys are like, all real BMX. Exactly. You're never going to take that away. I think it's just like you have friends outside of BMX. We all do. It's like we're not trying to like be like, no, no, this isn't for you. This is for us. Like, no, this is everything. We just want to do all this stuff. And like the main thing we want to, the other main thing is we want to collab with people. Mm -hmm. um, there's some pretty big ideas we have like again last year was hard but like we have some good ideas to like collaborate with other bmx brands or even other bmx clothing brands like we're not trying to beat anybody we're trying to do this with everybody and mm -hmm. i think that's like adam's like i don't want to hurt anybody i just want to like i want us to do something rad and like take all our friends with us there's that's enough it. people yeah. in the world to sell totally stuff totally to that's, everyone that's how I feel. and everyone can buy a little bit of everything exactly. they like it doesn't have to just be like i only have burn slow yeah. fuck cult yep. like i'm only burn slow exactly. it's like not competing it's helping it's it's all helping the scene we want to collab this whole thing. Cool too. Yeah. we want to yeah. collab with everybody and even if that's just like collabor collaborating with a rider that doesn't have anything to do with our brand or doesn't live in texas but if he's doing something cool we're like hey we're down to like collab and like stuff like that so i think that'd be cool sick so, man i love what you guys are doing yeah thanks Pleasure are you looking at your list? I am. What do you got for me? Uh, yeah, man. You, yeah, this I has got, been fun got, listening to you. I got you the talk talking. Yeah, yeah, you're really good. I love <laughs> it. Um, well, Brett so, will have his own. we got to get a, yeah. an unclick with Brett for I sure. He's one of the sickest warm up. up and coming warm pros up. right now. Oh, are you pro you. in all your companies? Are you? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yes. I figured. You're well, fucking, well deserved. He, yeah, well deserved. You are pro, on it right now. Oh, pro toboggan doer. Pro toboggan doer. He gives himself a he gives himself three on each trip, though. Three. Yeah, that's, that's good. See, I mean, that's, that's wisdom right that's there. Right, yeah. yeah, it is. Can't do two, man. Yeah. yeah he can. I mean, you could, I'd watch him all day, but. I know, you yeah. could look at him all yeah. day, but I get it, I get it. Yeah. You don't want to, like, you don't want to wear it out. The pop is too, the Brett, pop is insane. Yeah, what's The bar spin to pop is probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. Is there, like, a, is there, like, a degree? Like, that the toboggan is not valid if it's only, like, 10 degrees? Does it need to be, like, 16.5? Where's your. Oh, I don't know. It's, well, the tire. It needs to be slippy. He literally, like, he dips so far, like, he's, like, in like it's criminal a, like a, a, seek and destroy oh, or something over a dirt jump it's you know big. like it, it's like you need I, to feel the tire in between your cheeks he did a rail <laughs> hop did, <laughs> see there you go a couple i don't know if this i don't i don't think this maybe it's come out or not he did a rail hop in austin backwards and dipped it and the only reason he cleared the rails because it was now because already it, dipped oh. <laughs> and so the front wheel was like t almost touching the ground he's I, I was like okay <laughs> who's is that um is that Dennis doing a whip down El Toro? Yes, it is. <laughs> That's yeah. the, uh, yeah, that, that, there's like, because I think he tried it like oh, yeah, four times did, or something. Yeah, yeah, so, foot, right? yeah, he broke his foot. So there's like four Polaroids of him doing it. But did I mean, I, sh him? I shot a real photo, like a film photo, I think. I was like, yeah. But was like, like, there's like, but I brought the Polaroid camera just for a laugh. Did you shoot both or did someone else? No, shoot somebody, them? I think like. I think uh, Brownie Man Billy like shot the he, Polaroids, he, he or, my, or my girlfriend at the time, or something. Did he like, whip literally. it four times that day, or yeah, seven yeah, times? Yeah, four times that day. Four times that day. And something. I mean, he'll he'll know. A but three and, or something. and he never went back. No. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember. I guess I've never seen it. So people whipped it now, right? They no, did. he didn't film it. Oh, I didn't. It know was. That. It was. <laughs> He literally called. I mean, I lived up there at the time. He like called me and he's like, "I'm gonna whip El Toro." I'm like, "Okay, I'll be right over there." And I, like <laughs> okay. showed up, and then he was like, "Yeah, we don't have a video camera." I'm like, 
Okay. Yeah, I guess. Dick, Dick Polaroid. Yeah. That's so. crazy. No. You showed up prepared, but they didn't. Well, yeah, yeah. Did you ever hear the story how uh, Harrington was going to go hanger El Toro, Mm-mm. and I forgot my camera bag? Like, you just forgot it. Well, drove y- yeah, I drove there, we were there, and I forgot my camera bag. So, basically, there was some sort of weird switch. Like, I put I put my camera, or I, I maybe I brought my bag, but my camera wasn't in it or something like that. But and, like, you opened it at the spot. I Something, I mean... I don't know. Uh, it, basically, I showed up with with Ennis and and Harrington to El Toro, and and Harrington was gonna hang her El Toro, and I didn't have a camera. Damn! And, and he so, never did it. And he never did it. He he. We were like looking at. It, there was kind of people like kind of lingering around, and we're like, and he's and I didn't think I didn't think he was gonna even get a shot at it. But if if Harrington was sitting right here, he'd be like, I was gonna do it. You didn't bring your camera. So I didn't do it. I've so never he I've, he guilt trip me guilt trip guilt trips me on that one. Uh, you know, yeah. like uh, in a laughing way. But I've never been, I've but, never even been to El Toro. Never seen you, it. You're gonna drive right by it on the way home. Really? Yeah. I've never seen it. I've never been there. We should look um, at it. I've never. It's a really there. good spot. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, it's weird because I. How many times? How many times did you try the whip? That's how it got started up. Uh, like three or four. Probably. Yeah, so yeah, so it was only one up. session. Like one, yeah, I just one kept blowing there. my foot off until yeah. I broke it. Did you break <laughs> blowing it off or break on the pedal? Broke. Uh, blew it off the third or fourth time and it rolled up. Under, the yeah. tire Under, yeah. rolled it. Yeah. yeah. Just got it. Yeah. Like the, the hitting he, the ground was you fine. You never cared to go back. No, I was just yeah. like, I was so out of my league. Like it's yeah. like an uphill landing, and I was yeah. just like, I can't keep feet on it. I. It was the same thing kept happening. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I can't get this fucking foot to stay on. Well, who ended up doing it? The Little little juice, juice, over the juice, thing, yeah. right? Over the he, cart? Right next yeah. to the cart, right yeah. Next to the cart, yeah. There's a way, but if you want to do a set and it looks better and it has a better landing, El Toro's fucking like uphill. So it's like yeah, a 20 yeah. stair I, plus like harsh impact. It's. I always that. wanted to go see it and I always wanted to, I, I always wanted to fakey rail the, the one on the side. I just oh, yeah, yeah. But I, it was so steep. I've always seen that it's so yeah. steep and that's not the ideal situation for a fakey rail. So the walnut one, I've, walnut. Al- I've always been very... Yeah. Go to walnut because it's I want tall, to it looks better. One. But for a bike, it's like, yeah. that's a size rail. You want to ride fast. Yeah. Especially... Because El Toro is just like, you got to go so fucking exactly. slow. To ride that's it. why like a hanger at El Toro is it's, a it's horrible dead. idea. But just, walnut, like, it seems to make sense. Walnut but, doesn't... You know. Walnut's gnarly that it's been hanging. Yep. But like yeah. the amount of tricks that got done on Walmart, walnut, like in footage, it looks fucked up. Yep. And you get there and you're like, I get it. Like, yeah, yeah. I think the double tire is the one that's kind of... It seems crazy. But when you get there, you're like... If you have a banger you want to get done and like do it on something that looks fucking massive, yep. and it is massive. The the rail. Totally. I mean, that thing is huge. I'm like yeah. six. I've two, been six, there. Three. I was the, there when the Nathan did both his shoulders. Oh, You're six two. Six two or three. You're taller than me. Nathan's one eighty crook. I think is the most. Dangerous I was there that thing. day. Yeah. That, that is so it was dangerous. Like, and he did it. He was scared, and we went. We, we went back too. like later in the trip to do it. Like I've never seen Nathan walk away from anything. Every trip there. there has been dangerous. The one eighty crook is so dangerous. Like, yeah, he fuck. was like, um, uh, let's. He just wanted to. He was like, we'll come back. And I think that's I've one never of the seen him leave. Ever done. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him walk but, away from anything. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I after he says he's gonna do it. Yeah, all the straight tricks. It's like if you go fast, like the height of it and the ratio of it. like the bounce isn't that long. It's like beautiful for yep. that shit. It's just commitment. But the 180 crook is like yeah, it's so big. You get your, he was worried about getting the front wheel over. That was I mean, which is so perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. He uh, that's probably I mean I've that's been, a BMX rail though. Like if every rail was that tall, it'd be better. Yeah. I think for because like perfect. El Toro just drops away. At, like when you step Dude. back, you can just see the top and like wow. two stairs is gone. The fakey rail be. works on right. the higher the rail is, the better it works because yeah. you can just pull as hard as you want and get as high as you can. And you just get on. It's if it's low, down. is it? Yeah. Even the side one. Uh, all they're all them? capped, oh, but it's two crazy. capped. You get them yeah, all. Yeah, just get them all. Yeah. Damn. Um, but yes, I went through there. I was like, "Fucking shit's capped again." What uh? What do you got coming up next? All right, we're back. We're back. I mean, I think fuck it. We'll just keep the whole thing in there. Uh, wow, man, that's yeah. probably ridiculous. Um, to listen to. No, another no. No, I think nothing. the Harrington story is hilarious. I didn't yeah. know yeah. the whole Harrington uh, story. I mean, just me forgetting I my camera, right? Like fucking doofus. Maybe it was good that you did. It happens. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, but it's but it's Harrington, no, so it probably would have been fine. True. Yeah. Um, next, I don't know. I'm just kind of cruising. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to finish up this project with Devin. Um, we've started a couple things, filmed a couple clips this week. I don't know if we, we don't have like a place for them yet. Yeah. There's some talk of some other some stuff. So um, just kind of keep riding, hanging out. I like it. We're we're you know we got a bunch of stuff going on at home with like the like trying to get into this new like work on getting into this new house and some stuff. So we got a lot of stuff going on. Riding new wise. House? Yeah, we just we just committed to buy a new house. We don't we won't move in till August or whatever. So we got some time, but like 
That'll be a project. Two rental houses now, and then move into another one. It'll be the third one, or the third rental, and then yeah. You just put a bunch of effort into that other house, though. Yeah, but we're gonna. That's what he does. That's That's sick. That's smart shit right there. That, but luckily that doesn't happen until August, so we'll be chilling for a little while, and then uh, that one will be this house. The house we're in was awesome, and we put a lot of work in it, but it's it's pretty small. So like with the baby and everything, the new house is a little more. Changes the game. Yeah, yeah. And we knew that. We knew that the whole time. It was just a good opportunity to get into this house and like do this and so the next one's a little more realistic for like a family and like everything cool. it's That's in awesome. the na- it's basically in the same neighborhood it's not like a but it's a bigger house and it'll be like more realistic for the baby and she'll have like a you know she's sharing a room with the office right now yeah no, but like absolutely. whatever she don't she won't remember that um so other than that just kind of cruising trying to i'd like to go on some more trips like go do some traveling we've talked about doing like little like houston and san antonio trips all the time and like Stuff like that. So just kind of trying to stay busy. I just want to, for me, if I just ride two or three days a week, I'm good. So Hell yeah. Hell yeah. that's the plan. So Cool. Sick. Well, thanks, Thank you, Aaron. Aaron. Are you sure you don't want to answer that third question? No, I'm good. <laughs> all right. You got any shout-outs, any last words for all the people? We're going to wrap this thing up. Yeah, I'd like to thank Sunday and Odyssey, Empire, um, the, guy, like the people who have been there since day one, Pova for everything, always, you know, specifically like Jim Bauer and like, you know, Crandall, Tina and Tom. Yeah. My friends, you guys, uh, you know, all the people that have ever helped me do anything, shot any photos, all, all the people. So oh, yeah. That's Hell yeah, Aaron. If I forgot you, I'm not really forgetting you, but, you know. Thanks thank for you. changing the game in street riding and still motivating everyone to do it. And, cool. Brett, thank you for coming. It'd be sick to have you on one of these very, very soon. Hell one yeah. of the sickest up-and-comers right now. Thank you. Fudger, RBMX, and Zach, thank you for bringing them down. Unclicked, Aaron Ross. Boom. Thank you, guys.